Why, good morning, everybody. My name is Cameron. I'm eating a banana and I'm playing Minecraft, a combination that I don't think could be improved upon in any significant way. Things have been pretty nice. I'll be perfectly honest on that. Things have been rather nice. I'm um, just doing a quick lighting adjustment. Bye, dearest! As, saying, as well as saying goodbye to my love, my lovely dearest. <gasps> nice and bright this morning. Nice and bright to show the world that we are happy to be here. Or at least, yes, that we're happy to be here. Allow me a moment to finish my banana. I did not quite finish my entire breakfast, so I'm just working on that real quick. The coffee is in the French press. It's, I mean, it's it's an ideal way to start the day, if I if ever, ever so saw it. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day out here in Philadelphia. Probably a, like a, probably a warm 72 something degrees, maybe. It's been warm these past couple of days. So warm, in fact, that Anna and I were actually able to go out for a nice dinner last night to a place that's right up the road. It's a shitty bar, and you can tell it was shitty because we had people smoking outside and taking the... Smoking outside, that's not the shitty part. You smoke if you want to smoke. But taking your cigarette and then just tossing it to the table, to, uh, to, to, to the couple, two tables over, and, uh, and that's where we were sitting. So we were sitting there having our dinner and our cocktails, and then these guys over there smoking their things and talking about their girls took their cigarette and flicked it all the way next to our table, and we're just like... Really? The first time that happened, one of the gentlemen came over and stomped it out and was like, Huh, sorry, didn't see you there. I was like, well, I saw you there. But uh, it's okay. You apologize. That's cool. The second time, though, nah, nobody came over for that. I was, uh, yeah, whatever. You smoke if you want to smoke. You throw your ciggies if you want to throw your ciggies. But, like, could you be a little more courteous about it? I feel like you could be. Anyway. Banana time is good for now. There's a little bit left of that banana. I'm gonna get right into it. So we're gonna get right into it. So cool. So I discovered that a part of this mod pack is a mod called the Dimensional Anchor or something like that. What was it called again? Dimensional Anchor? Dimension. Whoops, not Dimensional. Dimensional Anchor. Dimensional Anchors. Funny, because the mod is called Dimensional Anchors. But it's really just dimensional anchor. There is only there is only one item. It's just it's just this one. There's there's nothing else that is dimensional about this, and it's essentially like a world anchor in Railcraft. But I guess it works a little bit differently. Where instead of it just being a three by three area always and only taking Ender Pearls, the dimensional anchor can be a straight line uh, in the X direction or the Z direction. It can also be a two by two area in the X and Z direction. It's got a size that you can change with the amount of fuel consumption proportional to how many chunks you were loading at the same time. And it also uses other things as fuel other than ender pearls, things like coal or charcoal, which I currently produce. And that's been running overnight to, to, to bring a lot of charcoal. So now this is the grand reveal of, I think it said it was running for 19 hours, 19 hours straight of the, the, the charcoal generating system generating charcoal. I'm curious to see exactly what I have. And there is only 20 stacks. There's no saplings. There's no wood. And the charcoal is being used. I didn't plan for so I have a strange feeling about this. One of the flaws in my system right now is currently that... Uh, oh, these are the dimensional anchors, by the way. And uh, they're clearly out of any fuel. One of the problems I have is the fact that my tree farm needs fertilizer to run. And fertilizer, as you can see, there's some fertilizer flowing through the pipes right now, comes from an area over there. And it shouldn't have been loaded because those, according to the dimensional anchor, which I can see which chunks are loaded by clicking the F9 key. Oh, well, they're currently not loaded right now because they're not on. But this thing needs fertilizer to run. There's 15 things of fertilizer. Why does it, why is it having a bad time? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure why there's 15 things of fertilizer there and things are still running, so I'm a little confused, actually. Because if there's no fertilizer, it tells it to make fertilizer. And to make fertilizer, it actually takes a lot of energy, which would then suck up all the charcoal because it's all trying to make edit power and energy and stuff like that. So let me check out where the fertilizer is coming from and see if that's the source of the problem. Also, I 
whoops, chemical reactor on the ground. Uh, I want to turn those chunk radii off, the little chunk boundaries off. This is where the this is where the fertilizer gets made. Interesting because this shouldn't be using anything right now, or actually, it's not. So, hmm. Oh, that's out of power. Okay. See, when things get out of power, they just kind of get stuck. And when the machine is stuck, oh, I just noticed my camera's in the wrong place. I moved that backwards the other day. I was doing some, uh, I was doing some other filming stuff. But when the machines, if the machine doesn't have quite enough power to complete its job, it just resets itself. And then continues to try to do the job. Which sucks up a lot of power because it just ke keeps on trying to chew through power and whatnot. But it can't because there's no power left over. So, uh, whoops. So that means, and I kind of, I kind of knew about the fertilizer problem yesterday, which is why I had things run overnight. I'm not exactly surprised that things didn't work out properly, but I'm a little disappointed. I'm not surprised, just disappointed. These machines over here do not use a lot of power. However, this one is the one that is trying to chug. It's trying to chug, but it ain't, it ain't chugging. It's not doing the chugs. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to replace the batteries. Replace the batteries or something like this. Excuse me. And I'll throw these over here. I'll take these ones. Uh, no, not those ones. How about what other ones? What can I? What can I steal? These packagers don't need this many batteries, so I will steal your batteries, and I will throw them over to something that needs it, something that could better benefit from it, like the indium suite over here. You could probably use more than one. Just in case. I'm not sure. So now that'll be producing fertilizer again. There's 15 stacks of it up there. But but either way, this, this system over here creating fertilizer, black, bad. Don't I don't like it. Um, so I need a different source of fertil fertilizer. And as it turns out, there are two ores that grow dangerously close to each other. One is phosphorus, and the other one is, I want to say it's Oh, uh, appetite, not glauconite. Appetite and phosphorus. When combined together, one piece of appetite to one piece of phosphorus will get four pieces of fertilizer. And I can just process that very, very easily with a chemical reactor. A very small chemical reactor, which I made one the other day. And I'm going to set that up and you, and you just mix it with water. As opposed to this system over here, which takes quite a bit of energy, turning fermented biomass into ammonia. Now... If I check on the recipe for ammonia once more in a ferment, a distillery, it always makes fertilizer. It, it always will. But it also takes a lot of energy, too. I don't want this system doing what it's doing anymore. I would much rather have a fertilizer system. Like, for example, this right now turns on and makes fertilizer when it determines, hey, the farm's out of fertilizer. We need more fertilizer. But if it gets stuck in this loop of, I don't have enough energy to continue going, then it becomes a huge problem and it sucks up all the energy. And that's not exactly what I want. These machines over here don't have the same power control systems as these ones do over here. These ones are set up quite well. If this buffer down here doesn't have, I think, 30% to 40% of its charge left over, which usually will, depending on what type of machine and what type of work it's doing, can pretty much just, like, take in an entire stack of it. Um, so if there's not enough power for at least one more stack of items, it just, it shuts it off completely. The hopper deactivates. This transfer note, this item conduit here does not take anything down from this chest. And it works very well when you have that point of, when you have that point where the energy is not enough to continue things it just kind of shuts off and waits until we get back up above a certain buffer for a full stack size brings that stack in or a couple at a time and then things continue as normal so yes that's usually how that works however i don't have the same system set up over here as you can tell there's not many there's no conduit there's no little wires there's no little wires on the side we just got it's just machines next to each other. And that's probably something to fix at a later date, but not right now. So now this is creating more ammonia. Uh, it's creating more vitriol solution over here, depending on the whether I've got calcopyrite or petlandite. It all brings it in here. Creates sulfuric acid. 
I've got plenty of sulfuric acid, and actually that's wonderful because there was a time where I did not have a lot of sulfuric acid, and that made creating circuit boards very, very difficult. It's not difficult to create circuit boards anywhere. This 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 little this little indium sweet over here, called the indium sweet because what comes out the other side of this is, um, indium. Uh, let's see. This the the uh, galena and the sphalerite come in. They get mixed with sulfuric acid. They become indium concentrate. Indium concentrate gets mixed with aluminium in this and gets turned into indium. Indium's a like an end game item thing. We don't. I don't use that, but it's nice to have a little buffer of that eventually. So that's that's toiling and working away. Um, that shouldn't be a problem on power anymore. I'd like to take this bio chaff and put this back up here. There is no need for that much chaff to be down there. That's too much chaff. No one no, no need no much chaff. I think uh, I want to say one of these uh, upgrades. I want to say one of these upgrades uh, makes sure that if there's any... Oh, no, there's just plenty. There's plenty of storage upgrades in here. Biochaff gets created anytime we've got persimmons. Persimmons get compressed into bio into biochaff and then gets churned up into plant balls. The persimmons come up here. They get they get brought up over here. And uh, that's pretty full of persimmons right now. But we haven't had any... I guess there are persimmons going. Yeah, there's persimmons. Yeah! Persimmon, 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 persimmon. And it does its thing. Persimmons come down. Persimmons come down. They go into there. They get shot all over the place because I don't need that many persimmons. I will only ever need 64 stacks of persimmons at a time. And if I flick that switch, they go to the compressor. They make plant balls. The plant balls get churned up into chaff. The chaff gets fermented and then fermented again. It becomes fertilizer. Anyway, that is a terrible, terrible system. Because then you get situations like this where I am completely out of fuel. And if I'm completely out of fuel, that's no go. So now what I need to do is... I got I got control systems for it, so there's no real big deal. No, no bad things happening here. Yeah, we got no charcoal and whatnot. That's fine, but I've got a master control switch. Oh, you don't want to create any steam? That's fine. Send everything back. Doesn't matter how much steam we have. I will not be making any more. And that'll just turn to the background. As I'm doing literally anything else so uh to do anything else so let me just take these two stacks of charcoal let's take two of them and turn these dimensional transceivers off Di i can't call them dimensional transceivers they're not dimensional transceivers they're dimensional anchors dimensional anchors and i throw some charcoal in there that'll be good for about four hours and do it in there that's be good about four hours so if i'm not here at the lab then i'm elsewhere for example, mining up phosphorus and appetite, which is what I'm going to be doing now. And uh, then it'll just keep making charcoal and stuff on its own. And that's the plan. To start things out with, I'm just going to go get... I'm going to go get phosphorus and pentland. Uh, phosphorus and blah. Phosphorus and... Oh my god, what's the other one? Meatball girl, give me, give me, give me appetite, appetite, appetite. Oh my god, breakfast is ready. You were DMing me this morning, appetite or... Okay, perfect, perfect. Good morning, meatball, how are you? How are you, my beautiful flower, how are you? Goodness gracious. Anyway, appetite, appetite. No, no, I was actually meaning to DM you just a moment ago because I realized I didn't respond to your breakfast is ready. The fuck am I on about? I'll tell you what I'm on about. Uh, yeah, power is, power is a bitch. You know the deal. Power problems are plenty. So I'm fixing the fertilizer. The fertilizer is the problem. The fertilizer is the problem. So I need a better way to create fertilizer. And lo and behold, uh, let me type into my thing here. Look into the fertilizer. Uh, yeah, it hit me too. Uh, I, I think so. It hit me too. I know what I'm referring to, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, you mean like a power outage? Oh, no, no, no. I mean like power in the Minecraft world. I forget. No, um, actually, yes. So I was actually at my parents' house the other day for my youngest brother's birthday, and the power went out for a little bit. And my mother had said that the power was kind of going off here and there, and it was very, very confusing. But I'm talking about I'm talking about charcoal power. Charcoal baby. Fertilizer can be created in the chemical reactor with the chemical reaction of phosphorus and appetite. Phosphorus and appetite go right next to each other. It's time to go mining, baby. And I'll keep this chemical reactor in my inventory to remind me 
to create a little to add to my system a little bit i want to add to my system a method in which when phosphorus comes in and appetite come in you combine the two together in a very low cost manner like, like for example to create fertilizer with a basic chemical reactor basic chemical reactor in the way that i plan on doing it's the appetite and the appetite and phosphorus just uh, some water that uses only 12,000 EU, 12,000 energy units, as opposed to the recipe for creating it with ammonia uh, in the distillery, which is also, oh, it's actually also 12,000, but it takes a hell of a lot longer. Really? Oh. Oh, but you know what? It's in a, it's in a, um, it's not in a basic distillery. It's actually in a, an advanced distillery. So it actually uses two four i think four times as much energy you sent me a vid where grim from billy and manny replaces ryuk in death note and it's and it's upsetting i see the little th i see the the, um, the video thumbnail over here it's light yagami with the death note in front of him he's all like this and then grim's just there on his shoulders like hmm i bet we can do something about this i've got an idea i'm thinking of an idea of what we could do with this terrible death note or something like that i've been seeing the grim adventures of billy and manny popping up like all over the place now because um the um the voice actor for billy who's also like the voice actor for um uh one, one of the imps from hell of a boss who's also the voice actor for he's the he's the when you when you when when you when, when. if you're familiar with tiktok that's that's the guy who does that. He's also the voice of the main character in Psychonauts. He's all over the place, this guy. Uh, anyway, while I'm going on this ramp, this uh, rambling here, my tangent, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go mining for phosphorus and glauconite uh, and appetite. But so, I've been seeing that pop up a lot because everyone's so obsessed with this one like TikTok sound that everyone's been obsessed with and whatnot, and uh, and so I guess he's gaining that popularity back, I suppose. Uh, I, can, I wish I could. I wish I knew his name off the top of my head. I, it takes me a long time to get things into my head, but when I do get them into my head, it usually sticks around for quite a while, depending on what type of memory I'm using at that time. <gasps> Beamish Niskers, be gone! <laughs> get out of here, but big ba 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 bad follow bots. You stupid. Thank you, Meatball. Thank you, Meatball, so much. But yes, so they, they've popped up, and uh, I use TikTok a lot now, so I see them a lot. Time to go down into the depths to find what's over here. Interesting how it looks like it's almost gotten started for me. Nice. But yes, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed it. It's quite a it's quite a time waster. Oh my god, I don't have any torches. Do I have torches? I have torches. My goodness. It's such a time waster. I used to spend a lot of my time like browsing through Reddit. And Reddit works. Oh, it works just fine. But TikTok, that algorithm, that algorithm makes me want to stick around. There's a little, <laughs> there's a setting inside of the app where you can like limit how much time you actually have the app open. In which case, I believe it works where once you've exceeded that time limit, it'll just stop giving you content. And I might need to turn that on because it's, it used to be a way for me to kind of get ideas for what I want to do because the internet's got plenty of places for ideas and for you to grow as an individual or as a person who has a presence on the internet. We as the community to be more present on the internet. But like, oh my God, most of it's just like silly stuff that I get completely and utterly distracted about. And hey, look at that appetite and all that stuff. And I found my little mining area, lovely. This is Phosphor- This is my pal Phosphorus. He's yellow and a little bit all over the place. This is my buddy Appetite. Kind of shiny, a little bit of blue, but uh, still kind of poking in like polka dots. This is Pyroclore. We really don't talk to him. Pyroclore really wants nothing to do with us and wants nothing to do with this game. So we kind of leave Pyroclore alone. And then there's, um, is there any others? I thought there were more. I thought there was another ore here. Hmm. Are you hiding around here somewhere? Maybe something else? Maybe something else? There's a little lead here. Lead's always happy to see us. Lead's always happy to see us. <gasps> More lead? Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, it's gone. Because sometimes the laser destroys things. But that's okay. Oh, can I? There we go. I'd like to come back in there. Now, I didn't realize I discovered this particular ore deposit before the retrograde. 
So it's interesting to see that I've actually done a little bit of mining over here. I think I see... Oh, oh, there's more down here. There's some yellow right and there's... Ski light. Wait a minute, ski light? Oh my god! No way! Oh my god, this is great! I have yet to find a tungsten deposit. And we've got tungsten now! Oh my god, this is perfect! Tungskate, ski light, and whatever else is in between. Oh my god, this is great! And what is this? Emerald? Emerald grows with this too? And lithium? Wow! That's awesome! That's incredible! I did not know that at all! Every once in a while, so like... You ever... I'm sure that everybody else has felt those moments where you're trying to find something, right? Maybe you misplaced something, and as you look for it, for the life of you, you cannot find it. You, like, whether it be like you misplaced a pen, you misplaced your keys, right? And you misplaced your keys, and you've left them probably on, like, like the counter somewhere in the kitchen. But for the life of you, you're looking in the bathroom, you're looking in the garage, you're looking in your car because you think if you had your keys, surely there'd be where the keys are. And hello, you asshole, trying to mess me up while I'm trying to have a nice, simple discussion with the people! Where are you? Where'd you go? Come back here, you asshole. I'm on fire. It's a good thing I've got water. Boop. Good to have water on you. But so you misplaced... Uh, needless to say, you got your keys and you've misplaced them, right? And they're everywhere where you don't think they are. All of a sudden, when you're not looking for your keys, you found your keys. Well, same thing happens to me with this weird random ore generator thing in this freaking mod pack here. For a long, 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 long time. Uh, my pal Meatball and I were trying to look for tin. Tin of all things. And lo and behold, after searching for far and wide, we eventually found tin. But it was way far away from our base. Way, way farther than anything. So what you're saying is you should hop on and fire more lava blocks on the vein? No! Don't put- don't- don't heal up my, don't cover up my tungsten. I mean, I've already marked it, so there's no way I will forget about this. And like emerald, uh, E. E, skelate, tungstate, lithium, and E. It's green for the E, but it's also dark and black for the tungstate. And you know what? We're going with emerald for the E. And I'm saving that. Hell yeah. But like, so we went way, way, way far away. Fountain, eventually. A large journey to literally the Alps. There's an alpine, um, there's an alpine biome in this particular mod pack. And that's where we found the tin. And we spent, like, a couple of in-game days there mining up all that tin so we could have tin. I have stacks of tin. And to be perfectly honest, I don't use as much tin as I used to. So we have a, a vast supply of tin. One of the other things that I've been looking for, I've been looking for two more ore deposits. I've been looking for an osmium deposit, which will be a source of not only osmium, but also iridium, which is becoming increasingly important because if I want to go to space, I need iridium. The iridium is a very, very hard metal, apparently, and also an incredibly rare metal, too. But the other thing I need is tungsten. Tungsten is used in something called tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide? Tungsten carbide? Tungsten carbide. Tungsten... Where's tungsten carbide? Where's my tungsten carbide? I know I got tungsten carbide in here somewhere. Tungsten steel. Oh, also tungsten steel, but also tung tungsten carbide. And I don't exactly remember what it's used for right now, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that is also important somewhere. Tungsten steel mostly because I think um, if I take a look at my... This is a coil block here. This is for my uh, blast furnace. But if I, if I look at the coil blocks, I think tungsten steel... Coil block is the next level up from what I have. Yep, I currently have nichrome, and tungsten steel would be the next level up. And tungsten steel must be made with tungsten steel wire. Tungsten steel wire gets combined together. Can be made from tungsten steel inga. Tungsten steel inga can be made from an alloy smelter. No, probably a blast furnace. Vacuum it back down again. And then we go back over here. We've got awesome, yes. Tungsten, ingot, and steel. Iridium is what you use to make your mechs tougher in Warhammer 40k. Nice! Speaking of Warhammer 40k, I'm not sure if it's still available right now. Meepo, you'd probably be interested in this. One of the Warhammer games, I think, is completely free on Steam right now. I want to say it's Warhammer something Underworld, and I snagged that the other day. 
Um, and the only reason I found out about that, I've mentioned TikTok already, right? I learn things on the internet. The more I underhive, maybe it's underhive. It might be underhive. But I learn things on the internet. And one of the things that I learn on the internet is there is this one account that does like um they they share free game details and so i've been i've been really swiping up those free games because i want more i want more options of games to play uh, and and now i have all these launchers on my desktop i have the amazon launcher the twitch launcher for games i've got the curse forge launcher steam epic games launcher I forgot that Origin, you know, like the ones who facilitate the Sims games had their own launcher, but Amazon Prime was just like, doot, doot, doot. hey camera, guess what? Did you know you could get Battlefield 4 for free right now if you get the Origin games launcher? I was like, no way. You could also have literally any other, literally under any other service that used um, Origin games on it, but I don't have like an Xbox or like a PlayStation or anything like that. Would love to have me an Xbox or a PlayStation, but we keeping it classic for now. Keeping it classic. Got my GameCube running. I am happy with that. I am happy with that. But uh, I didn't have that, um, so I just I downloaded another launcher. Now I got all these launchers. Let me let me check real quick all the launchers that I've got. The game's gonna get weird for a second. We got Steam. We got Course Forge. We got Twitch. We got Amazon Games. We got Epic Games. We got Origin. We got League of Legends. We've got Minecraft. We've got and then two of these other games over over here. There's Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact. I don't really play a lot of uh, Honkai Impact. Let me get back into the Mince Raft. Mince Raft. Here we go. So back into Mince Raft. But again, all these launchers with games that I may never play the goal the goal is to be able to play all of these games all these games all these games all these games that's the point oh that was a, that was like an actual emerald interesting that was not a part of the deposit at all but we got lithium baby lithium's good too lithium is great for batteries i have been using sodium for all of my batteries and it's not a very good battery like it works and if it works that's that's fine but i could get something better Sodium batteries are the lowest form of battery. Lithium batteries are like the top form of battery. And and let's see, I don't want to quote myself on this. Battery. Battery, battery, battery. Yes, you've got you've got these small acid batteries. You've got your cadmium batteries at the bottom, lithium, and sodium. Sodium is the the lowest of the bunch. Cadmium comes next, and then lithium comes after that. Lithium is just amazing. I have quite a bit of cadmium because cadmium is a rare earth metal anytime i mine redstone i get rare earth rare earth can be can get cadmium inside of it and cadmium has absolutely no other uses the only use for cadmium is for batteries and so i really should be taking advantage of that but i'm not because i just i just forget about it right are there any other uses for cadmium let me let me check that and let me put all this lava in one place there's there's no need here y'all want some of this y'all want some of this Hello, creepy. Hello, they are creepy. How are you? Hello, creepy. Goodbye, creepy. Pretty nice. Then I'm so happy that I found this. Anyway, let me take this. Let me take all this lava out of here. Oh, that's already that's already going down. I'd rather remove the lava from up here to prevent any creepy crawlies from messing with me while I mine. Because mobs spawn in the lava. That's that's the beauty of lichenites, and you can't hold a you can't hold a lava bucket in your hand for too long in this mod pack either, or else it will start messing you up as well. So uh, be careful. There's big old lava coming from up here. Wow, you're pretty cute, pretty cute little lava bucket. And nice and hot. You hot. You fire, girl. Literally fire, literally. Well, I mean, literally molten rock. Yeah. If your friends are telling me that you're literally fire, remind them about lava. You were literally- Queen? Queen. Queen. You were literally molten rock from the core of the earth. Just so you know. In case, you for in case you've forgotten. And which causes other things to set on fire. Also, queen. Don't forget, queen. Queen, don't you forget. But this is- This is who you are. You are beauty. Beauty! Who is she? Lava. Molten, molten rocks. And I will just, I don't know. I have glass on me. I'm using glass. That's thats how we're going to do it. Isn't that pretty? Man, if this isn't pro Minecraft action, I don't know what it is. I, I don't even know what it is. That's just so I can get over here and get all up in this tongue state over here. Tongue state and ski lights. 
I love that. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I... This kind of started out as a disaster. Power is not where it needs to be. Everything says... I'm sure it was 40k. I have no idea if it was 40k. I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, if you if you want to double check, I don't have a lot of Warhammer games in my library. I've got I've got my library link, my Steam library link in my uh, about page below. If you want to just click on that, or I mean, you've probably got Steam open. Why am I even suggesting that? You've probably got Steam open. Just check the games that I have. One of them is called like Underworld or something. I don't know if it was 40k to be perfectly honest, because I don't even know the difference to be honest i've only played warhammer like once and it was okay you know what you, you, let me just i could just check it myself hold on i'll just i'll just double check it myself so the world nope that didn't work nope that didn't nope stop stream why are you breaking don't break stream i just do the steams i'll open up the steams and while the steam opens up i'll just play in this mode for a while because uh my obs does not play nice with minecraft on not full so like this is windowed mode this is full screen but without like the full screen full screen it's windowed full screen and it doesn't work very well anyway we'll deal with that for a hot second while steam opens up and then i'll check that i'll check that you don't have to put in the legwork let me put in the legwork i whoa okay steam has opened up and uh all right well let's see what it was recent games recent games ones that are not installed it's called warhammer underworlds online so it looks like an mmo so no i don't believe it's 40k at all to answer that question i don't know if i will ever play it but if somebody says hey that's like my favorite game of all time if the community is just like yo we should all play that game then i will play that game i will play that game i will play any game in my steam library so if somebody tells me to or really any game at all and uh, if it's streamable then i will stream it if y'all tell me to play Honey Pop, for example, I will play Honey Pop. I have at least 30 hours in Honey Pop. But I will not stream it. Because that is... Ex remember, remember, I am here. We are here. The Twitch overlords are up here. Pecking order. We gotta remember the pecking order. And the pecking order states, Thou shalt not stream Honey Pop. At least not on Twitch. So if you want me to stream Honey Pop, subscribe to my OnlyFans. Or uh, or big, make a big. Well, let's let's make enough. Let's make a big enough case. Let's get let's get big. Let's get big and make sure that everybody knows that for the for the bad stuff for the naughtiness. That's uh, that's what we go to the OnlyFans for, or literally anything else. If the need ever arose that I have to stream Honey Pop, I will find a way. I will find a way, and I will probably warn my fiance ahead of time so she doesn't just come over and be like oh my god what are you playing like what the hell are you doing for those who aren't in the know by the way honey pop is a hentai game but it's a match it's it's a it's like a matching hentai game like think of almost like bejeweled like match the colors together that's honey pop and the gameplay in my opinion is phenomenal the story is lacking but like, apparently, it's definitely for a different, uh, oh, you're over here now? It's definitely for a different demographic than me. Oh, hi there, Violet Afra, 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 Violet Afra, 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 I got the Afra. I've defeated the Afra. But yes, I have played the game. I genuinely enjoy it. But not for that type of content. Hi there. Okay, goodbye. Genuinely not for that content. But then again, even if I did, who's gonna, you know, who's gonna prove me wrong? There ain't no shame in it. Yeah, exactly. There is no shame. There is no shame in me saying I enjoy the game Honey Pop because I do. Haven't played it in a while because I kind of played through the whole thing, but I plan on getting all the achievements in that game one day. I have one perfect game on my Steam account, and it is some obscure puzzle game called, like, Hex Cells, I think. It's just, it was, it was cute. I beat all the levels. You got all the achievements when you beat all the levels. That was pretty much it. But one day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna perfect Honey Pup. That's one of my life, that's one of my life goals, I would say. I, I would consider myself, I want to say that I'm not a simple man. I don't know, I'd like to say that I'm a simple man. I'm not a simple man. Because simple men don't aspire to 100% obscure hentai games on steam but i i will i mean at this point it's not even obscure 
I'd say it's it's one of the popular ones. In any case, why have I spent so much time talking about this? Because I enjoyed it. Because I, I, I like that game. It brought back many memories. More importantly than just my own gameplay of Honey Pop was the time I played with my with my with I was gonna say family. I did not play it with my family. Although anyway, story time. So when I first, back in high school, I was not the one who discovered this Honey Pop game. I was, I did not discover this. I did not go out of my way to find like, you know, is there some, uh, anyway, all, all this stuff. Hentai games are underrated and fun and not even for the obvious reasons. Yeah. What's the obvious reasons? You're gonna have to explain that to me. But anyway, friends of mine popped on and said like, yo, we should totally play this game together. And we were all hanging at my ha at my parents' house, and we were all having a little bit of a party. A party was go a party was going on, a party worth celebrating, a party worth having. And we were like, you know, what we should all do. We should all play this obscure hentai game together. And so my buddy there bought the game for me right then and there. We loaded it up in my parents' living room on the big television, Honey Pop. All these bright colors and the and the and the the, the fairy character and whatnot and like you're gonna screw girls. That's what this game is. And we're like, oh oh boy, this will be one hell of a time. And we played through, at least to the point where you got down and dirty with one of the ladies, and um, in the living room with about five to six other kids, um, in my parents' living room. And eventually we came to the point where you started you started doing the do. You started doing that do with one of the one of the hentai girls. With with one of the girls of the hentais. And then my parent my mother walked in and she's she's like, what are you guys playing? Cause she loves to see like what kind of games we're playing. She's a very supportive mother in that regard. But she walked in and she was like, What? What are you playing? And we're like, Don't worry, mom, it's totally normal. We're just we're just high school students. She's like, you know what? I don't want I don't want anything to do with it. And she walked out of the room and we continued it and we finished it. We finished that battle. We got all the way through. Oh, did I never actually I haven't actually mind tongue state yet. Interesting. But uh, we got through it. Oh, we got through it all right. And uh we we did it. Oh, Oh, yes, we did. Uh, yes. And then, so that was the one story where I played it with all my friends in the, in the living room at my, at my mother's house. My mom is awesome. My mom's an awesome person. She's great. She pops in a stream every once in a while. I love it. Last time she popped in, she dropped a cupcake in chat. And uh, I feel like chat could use more cupcakes. I, I think chat could use more cupcakes. We could use more cupcakes in here. Uh, we could all use some more cupcakes in our lives. Although, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not a big cupcake guy. Because the, the frosting on top of the cupcake, I'm not really usually a fan of it, you know? I'm not a big, I'm not a big, like, uh, usually they put, uh, what is it? Buttercream? Buttercream! They usually put buttercream on top of the cupcakes, and you know, not, I don't really like buttercream. Not a, not a big buttercream guy. You know what I like? Uh, I like, um, 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 it's, it's a type of cream. It's a type of lactose thing. Um, cream cheese, like a cream cheese type, like cream cheese type frosting, not like, oh, slather cream cheese on top of a cupcake, like, no, 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 that's not what I mean by cream cheese frosting, like, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, we know what we mean, right? Kind of using Obvious reasons being, y you know, you, you know, you know, you know, when you know, <laughs> when you know the obvious reasons of, uh, you know, why do you play hentai games? Oh, you know, the obvious reasons. What what's what's the obvious reasons? Oh, you know, you know. I don't I don't think I know. I think you're gonna have to inform me of that. I would love I would love for like at this point in time, like the developer, like the developers of a hentai game, to pop in right now and be like, "We appreciate your feedback. Would you like to tell us why you enjoy our generic hentai game with match three capability?" And, she, and you're like, "Um, I've been put on the spot here." And I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that. Hopefully, whatever survey comes out for that, they are anonymous. Unless you're, unless you're that kind, unless like that, that's your shtick. If that's your shtick, if your shtick is just like I play hentai games for a living, then you know what? Awesome. I would love to. I would love to meet you. I would love to be able to have a conversation, just to be able to. I want to know what it's like. Not know what it's like. I'm sure it's just like playing any normal game. 
except you're perhaps we're all desensitized to it perhaps every game i've ever played is actually a hentai game i've just been so desensitized to it that i just don't notice for example minecraft hentai game excuse me um pokemon hentai game um i don't know literally anything else that could be so accursed to come out of my mouth mario hentai game yep it confirmed mario is hentai confirmed but I could just be so desensitized to it, like, like, uh, let's see, Mario Tennis, Peach and her ankles. Yeah, that's disgusting. Put those ankles away. It's technically hentai. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I feel like, I think I've gone on long enough about hentai. I, I, I'll admit it, I was not expecting to touch upon hentai topics within the first hour. But, uh, you know what? We just, we go where the conversation leads. I, I'm I'm happy to go wherever the conversation goes. I'm cool with that. I'm chill with that. Honestly, might as well talk about something like that while we're mining away. Mining back. Oh my god, my coffee's done. I never never did that. Coffee pour time. Time to pour the coffee. Being surprised. We're all surprised. We're like, how did how did he talk? How did we talk about hentai for so long? And we we haven't been caffeinated yet? How is this possible? Oh, that is still nice and warm. Oh, that's lovely. My little my little my French press here. Uh, according to the box, it's got like the borosilicate glass on the outside, so like it doesn't really break. It's really good for temperature keeping and stuff like that. It's wonderful, and I think it makes a mean cup of coffee. I think it makes a mean cup of coffee. What's that coffee? Well, that's not very nice. That's a mean cup of coffee. <laughs> Playing it normally is pretty much how it goes. Playing the hentai games, I believe we're talking about, Honey Pop specifically, with occasionally getting sidetracked with the looks of the characters and if you break mentally, IRL activities. Good for you. Good for you. I've never been in a point where I could do such IRL activities. Not such like that. Certainly not with a game in front of me. If you recall, here's a camera. There's a camera. There's a camera. Down there's a camera. There's probably a camera in, in one of my rings for all I know. So, uh, goodness forbid, somebody had access to one of those cameras. You're just like, hmm, you gotta wonder. You gotta wonder. I don't think the government, like, let's let's be frank here. We know what we're talking about. I don't think the government is particularly interested in me and anybody, anybody like, doing the do with themselves. But, like, I don't know. There's some sick fucks in the government, too. I'm sure there's at least one government agent out there who's just like, yes, I'm a part of the um, Masturbation Awareness Department. Yes, we are cameras are on. Yes. We are watching you, and yes, we know what you're up to. Although, I gotta wonder, I don't know why, I don't know why my tax dollars are going towards that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. But I suppose, if it's a matter of national security, like, we have to watch for people. We have to watch for people here at the, um, the, the MAA, the, uh, or no, actually, the government is made up of bureaus. So the MAB, the Masturbation Awareness Bureau. At the MAB, we watch for people like you who are um, who are making a mess of their lives. Um, you all are not functioning members of society. So we have to keep tabs on you. You're at increased risk of doing terrible, terrible things for our great United States. So we watch you. We monitor you. And, uh, me, specifically, M-A-B head. Hi there, my name's, um, my name's Clint. And, um, Clint watches. Clint watches us all. Clint is watching us all from behind the camera. And Clint is specifically watching for when we are doing such activities as to be covered under the, uh, code of conduct and mission statement of the M-A-B, a bureau of the government, obviously. <laughs> Fuck you, look at my watermelons if you want. I got nothing to hide. Do you? I don't really have much to hide here. I mean, what? The, where's the sparkly things? Oh, Andy man. Andy man, where'd you go? I saw your sparklies. Oh. 
I really don't have much to hide over here. There's nothing really like, not that I can, not that I can imagine. I think if there's anything I had to hide, it's all in my bedroom. Wink. And even still, it's my, it's not much. That's not for the purposes of hiding. It's for the purposes of just like, oh, you know, like if somebody like, uh, I don't know, like my landlord came around to check out the apartment and they just happen to be, you know, walking around the room. Just, just so that it's not just laying out in the open. Like, you know, that's just, that's a conversation that I don't necessarily want to have with my landlord. I'll have it. Don't get me wrong. Landlord, come in here and find it. I will converse with you about it. Come in here and find- Whoa, okay. Okay, hi there. Hi there. Um, where'd you go? Hey there, buddy. Didn't know you were spawning over here. Alrighty then. Well, I'm very poisoned now. That was interesting. Where'd you come out of here? What'd you do that? What'd you do that for? What you gotta do and do that? Masshole. I'm gonna eat my PB&J. Get my PB&J. And drink my coffee. Drink of my coffee. I like to drink of my coffee. Bee. All right, right mouse button. Right mouse button. Are you working? What the? F <laughs> yes, lurkers underground. Oh my god, did I just break my? Oh shit! What just happened? Oh, what happened? Oh, look at that! Minecraft crashed. That's cool. Index out of bounds exception. So that always happens with the backpacks. I have no way how to fix that. Anyway, all right, let's restart Minecraft again. All right, I guess we'll just hang here for a little bit. Hello, everybody. Minecraft is relaunching. It may take a little bit of a moment, but let's let's continue the conversation where we left off. Yes, there are lurkers spawning underground. Yes, it's terrifying. And no, I don't think any of us are okay with this. I certainly am not okay with this. I didn't realize they were even gonna come out and spank me the way that they did. That's that's truly unfortunate. Actually, you know what? This is a perfect time. This is a perfect time to finish my banana. I had a banana. I, I ate almost all of it. Let's let's finish the rest of the banana. That doesn't have to be a big talking topic. Let's uh Warhammer Underworlds is a Warhammer fantasy, and its reviews are horrid. Well, that's probably why it was free. I've also gotten some other free games as well. Um Actually let's let's um uh, let's take a look at this. While uh, while Minecraft is booting up, let's uh let's do that. You know what? Let's let's take a check. Warhammer Underworlds Online. Horrible reviews. Let's go take a look at it. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go take a look at the store page for Warhammer Underworlds Online. We are curious. I am curious. Let's take a check. Take a check. Store page, please. Thank you. Thank you. You wanted to finish the banana that you sent me earlier. You sent me a banana? Did you send me a banana? Hmm. Warhammer skulls, mostly. Whoa, okay. These are terrible, apparently. All right. Oh my God, there's a bunch of reviews for. Is this an MMO? Is it an MMO? No, I don't think it is. Is it? Minecraft? Minecraft crashed. So it's reloading. We're looking at horrible reviews for Warhammer Underworlds online. Because I'm curious of what they are. Let's see. This game only has two warbands playable at the start with all the others costing $7 each. I got this game for free and I still feel ripped off. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like that. Was it helpful? Yes. Because I also got the game for free. And uh, I mean, I'm not totally um, ripped off. Hey, look, who's playing? Who's live right now? Can I do this? New DLC. Steam thing. There's a Discord. That's cool, I guess. Um, Minecraft, have you loaded yet? Nope, not yet. Game system is fine. I want the funny reviews. Where are the funny ones? Got this game for free and still overpaid. Yeah, we've seen it. Seen it already. Ridiculous money sucker trap. Poo poo. The poo poo review. Oh, you got. All right. Phew. Where do I start with this thing? Oh, boy. Here we go. Phew. That's it. Where do I start with this thing? Number one, luck. If you can't deal with being unlucky as hell and failing a lot of dice throws, then this game is not for you. Number two, paywall. There are two starting warbands, and that's it. For the average guy, they are basically generic good guys and generic bad guys. All the more unique warbands have to be bought, which for some reason not might not be a problem because they're good with starting just two, but it can be pretty problematic when and if a content that you have to pay for is overpowered in a player versus player only environment. Now, I'm not a fan of Age of Sigmar, so I don't know who most of these guys are even in the game. And I still recognize Skaven. I don't recognize any of these characters, by the way. 
These might be good to try. Oh, wait, pay more. But in the end, such stuff isn't really unusual when it comes to Warhammer genres. Hmm, where was I? Ah, yes. Numa 3. What's Numa 3? I still recommend it above. Stuff doesn't scare you away. They look like the game is okay. It's basically a tabletop game like me. You get really much into it. That's very wonderful. Thank you so much, Jashin, for your wonderful review. And uh, it's a positive one. Things are mostly negative, but you are some of the good ones. Hey, where, where are all these good reviews coming from? No, I want the bad ones. Where are the, where are the bad reviews? Review type? The bad ones. Wait a minute. Oh, recent reviews. Recent reviews are mostly negative. I was like, wait a minute. Review type, there are th about 400 negative reviews and almost 800 positive reviews. So it's actually got more positive sentiment than it does negative ones. But like, I am much more interested in this one. Honestly, I'm much more interested in that. Let's see. And two war bands to start with. We already got that one. Eternal Crusade is, has much better reviews and surprises you. Interesting. Um, this is what a pile of turd looks like. All right, really bad in its current state. Played for the board game version and loved it. It's just a demo. You can't unlock anything without putting down cash. Unfortunate. No one to play with and the AI is dumb. Well, now there's plenty of people for you to play with because everyone got it for free. There's so many other reviews. Oh my God. Oh my goodness gracious. Anyway, I can only get so I can only go so much into just bad game reviews. I got some other games for freeze too. I wonder what those reviews are like. I got this Minion Masters game, which was free, apparently, and the DLC that goes with it. Uh just just right off the bat. This scares the shit out of me. This does not look safe for children. That thing that's like a, you're like, I understand if you've got like the, the the eyes. If the eyes didn't have those eyebrows, I feel like it would be more child friendly. But that that scares me. That scares me considerably. But uh, I wonder if the uh, one of the reviews will scare me even more. Is it good? It's very positive. People like this game, apparently. Better than any other game of its kind. Obsessed with this Minion Masters shit. Total Biscuit says it's really slick and plays really well. Well, thank you, Total Biscuit. Better than Clash Royale. Hearthstone's so popular when this game exists. Is this like a like a Hearthstone thing or whatever? Is it kind of get your get your deck? Is a deck building free to play strategy game? Hmm. It's highly recommended. Mojang still hasn't loaded yet. Whoops, didn't mean to go back to that. Highly recommended. Devs of this game have no interest in balancing it. Sex? Sex? <laughs> what does that have anything to do with this game? You're telling me. Hold on a second. You're telling me that this, this right here, screams. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Where'd it, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Six. That equals sex. Apparently. Well, I mean, to, you know, to each their own. And, uh, thumbs up. A must try. It looks like Minecraft is loaded, so, uh, I'm gonna go back to it. Let's do it. Game capture, please. Back to Mince Wrapped. Hey, we're back again. We're back again. We're back again. Time to mine more tungstate. Ski light. Tongue state, ski light, and lithium. You know, come to think of it, I know there were other reasons of why I wanted tongue state uh, and tungsten in general so much. So I need to check to see what exactly that was. I, I gotta, I gotta check that. Um, because I was mentioning before how there's also uh, an ore deposit called osmium that I really want to find. And osmium contains sources of iridium. But when you actually process those osmium ore, you can, you can like, you can squeeze a little bit more iridium out of it. And I want that. And I think tungsten might have the same thing. I think actually tungsten probably you can squeeze lithium out of. And as I mentioned before, lithium is great for, um... Lithium is great for batteries, and I think more importantly down the line, you can actually use lithium as um, nuclear fuel cells because I believe lithium has some um, radioactive um, isotopes. Isotopes or isotones? Isotones, I think. Uh, I took a radiation health class once upon a time, and I can't exactly remember. I think depending on the radioactive decay process you either develop isotopes which would mean isotopes means you have the same number of protons so for example let's see what is carbon is, is carbon well let's see helium helium is two that's an easy one helium two if you had a hydrogen with two protons hydrogen two and helium regular would uh, be isotopes of each other isotones 
uh, is when you have an equal number of neutrons with each other. Remember, just because you have more neutrons in your nucleus doesn't mean that your element changes at all. It's the, specifically the number of protons that determine what element you are. But of course, that has no say in what actual chemical properties you have. That's got to do with how many electrons you have and what your electron cloud looks like. But anyway, we, we just... We don't need to get too, uh, too into that and whatnot. But needless to say, if you have the same number of neutrons, you're an isotone. If you have the same number of protons, you're an isotope. And um, depending on depending on the isotome or isotope, then uh, you can have differing uh, radioactive properties and decay, things like that. But I think it's very possible that uranium may or may not have a... Uh, its decay train might involve a, a lithium element somewhere in there. Uh, it's possible. Uh, don't quote me on it because I am not a, uh, I'm not a, um, oh, what do you call it? I'm not a frig. What's it called? Oh my God. Radio, somebody who does a nuclear, nuclear person. I'm not a nuclear person. I'm not a nuclear engineer. So like, oh, who, who is it? Hello? Who's touching me? Who touched me? Don't touch me like that. Don't touch me like that. I don't like being touched like that. I'll just add this to my lava collection. There we go. That's my eternal lava collection. Um, but yes, I think that's why it may be so important, potentially. I don't know. And then I'll have to light up this whole area because this is now an important area for me. I will come back here probably more often. It looks like something is hurting me up there, and I'm not sure sure what it is. Somebody's like throwing shit at me. What is what is hurting me? Uh oh no, I've got the lava bucket in my hand. Duh. That's what it's doing. Wizards. Wizards of Waverly plays. Wizard 101. Oh my god. I should totally play Wizard 101. Such a good idea. I used to play that a ton when I was younger. My uh, my brother specifically, uh, my brother would get so into the Wizards 101. He got really far with a lot of the content. He was one of the, I, I was one of those kids where I was like, I don't want to pay for a game at all. Just because my parents can pay for it doesn't mean that I want them to pay for it. And so I genuinely would not ask. I was the kind of kid who I was afraid to ask for things because I, in one way I knew if I asked for it, I knew I would get it. But I didn't want to ask it for it because I felt like I didn't want to be the person who asked for too much. I didn't want to be the person who wanted too many things. Um, I'm now older and I realize if I want something and I have the money to purchase it, while also if I purchase this, I will have money left over for all the normal things, then yes, I will absolutely buy it because I have a reward system that's hard coded into my brain and I want that serotonin boost. I want to get the things that I want because I want my serotonin. I'm all, I just want the serotonin, dude. But so I will do that if I have the money for it. I have the, I have the margin for it and I will do that. Wizard 101 is about a nuclear dawn. Who knew? The two are not as far apart as you may think. I mean, naturally, if you have magical powers, you must have gotten them from something radioactive. As I've learned from every early nineties um, animated show about, or any, any comic, any comic, really, any early comic about um, superheroes. And if I want to be a superhero, I should pre uh, precariously place myself towards some radioactive source because that's how that works. Or I should be the offspring of some creature from another planet who got their superpowers because like, I don't know, genes or something. Or I should subject myself to various different experimental times, types of gene therapy so that spontaneously, I'll just gain some type of inhuman ability that also happens to fall under the superhuman category. There are many ways to gain powers. I, I for one, you know, I'm happy being, that happy being human right now. I think I'm okay with that. I feel like the politics are a lot simpler because I am just a quote-unquote normal human being. Uh, if I was anything more than that, I'd be nah, bad. Or you can step into a gamma ray chamber or watch your anger issues manifest into something more. Yeah, right? You could be the Hulk. You could be a... What's was his name? Um, Something Bannon? Bannon? Banner. 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 Something Banner. Steve Banner? I think that's, in the, that's what his name is in the Marvel Universe. I think. I don't know. I just like a... Bruce! That was it! Bruce! Bruce, I always get it. I always get mixed up. I'll be perfectly honest. To, to, from my point of view, a lot of these characters have such generic names, so uh, I get myself confused every once in a while. And every once in a while, I get myself confused. Steve is Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers. Now that's that's Captain America. That is that is my captain. My captain. 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 My captain. My captain. Steer my ship towards. 
something. <laughs> captain, my captain, steer my ship towards somewhere so I can sit in your lap, tin. Or, or something. I don't know. What rhymes with captain? Captain? Ca cap Capson? Capson's a protein. Cla Clapton? Clapton? Hey, yo, Captain, let me clap in those ass cheeks. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, I don't like that one. This is still poetry. As I've, as I've learned. I've, as I've learned, anything can be poetry. Got, throw a little rhymes in there. Get, add some personal sentiment to it. You got poetry, baby. That's poetry, my man. That's poetry, my dudes. Everybody, 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 everywhere. The Incredibles actually made a joke referencing that by naming the main character Bob. And where the fuck did you come from? Get out of here! Stupid! It's a little Minecraft. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's why I named him Bob. I, I understand that. It's kind of like, it's become so much, like, it's gone beyond being a joke now. Now it's just, it's the meta. The meta being like, well, yeah, we name superheroes totally, like, inconspicuous names. And I think, like, the in-universe reason for that is, like, there's a ton of Bobs. There's a ton of Steves. If you tried to look up Steve Rogers in a phone book because you wanted to find who the real identity of Captain America now, if, if it wasn't already obvious in the universe, if it wasn't already a public information, um, like you probably have a hard time scrolling through all the different Steve Rogers and calling them up like, hi, hello, Steve Rogers. Yes, are you Captain America? No, okay, have a wonderful day. Hello, hi there, uh, are you Steve Rogers? Are you Captain America? Uh, no, okay, have a nice day. Pick up the next one. Hello, Steve? Steve Rogers? Oh, Steven. Okay, uh, do, do you happen to be Captain America by chance? No? Okay, have a wonderful day, Stevens. Like, yeah, I can imagine. Or, uh, that damn, that, the, the guy from the news center. Uh, like, the damn, I need to find that Spider-Man. If you found one day that, that's my Peter Parker. I mean, he'd have an easier time finding the Peter Parker because at least at the time, Peter Parker was, like, working for him or whatever so like i feel like that'd be a little easier but even still oh sorry bat didn't mean to conflagrate you like that but now that you're on fire say hello to G god for me oh you didn't get my message on your way toward that great beyond make sure to say hello to god for me <laughs> jonah jo jonah johnson jonah johnson's a pretty generic name jonah jameson J jonah jameson 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 Jama 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 Zam. Jama 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 I actually printed some things for him. I got a... His birthday was recently. So uh, I, I made him... I printed out some things on my 3D printer. I like to print birthday gifts. I think the worst part... Or not necessarily the worst part. The the time, the part of the 3D printing process that I have to spend the most time on is the finishing process. Because I... You know, my printer's a little wonky. I, I mean, it's not super duper wonky. But it's very stringy. And there is a lot of gunk that gets left on those prints afterwards. And you, I mean, that's no problem at all. You just gotta, just gotta shave the things off. You just gotta shave what's off that print. A lot of the, it'll be a little rough around some edges. Sometimes you gotta fill in some gaps a little bit everywhere. If the print uh, uh, somehow moves during the printing process, you might have to like do a little bit more than just the normal like sand it down type thing. I've had to do that once or twice. I had this one thing. So like, if you're, if, if, if one, if one of y'all, if one of us was the kind of, if, if anybody out there is like me, right, and you do your dishes, uh, I do my dishes by hand, or I, I actually rather, not even necessarily that, but I keep my, um, silverware in a different cup in the sink than, like, my dishes and stuff, and the reason for that is I have a garbage disposal, and so I don't want a fork, for example, to get caught in that garbage disposal, because if it does, that's no, no good. And I need to, I need to whack my mouse again. There we go. Every so often, the right click doesn't work. It's a shitty mouse. I need to, need a better one. But uh, every once in a while, that just stops working. So, uh, yes. There's that. Um, let's see. I need to move my keyboard forward a little bit. 
I need more room to stretch. I feel so confined behind this desk. I need to spring my wings and fly. So uh, I'm moving. I'm just adjusting. I'm adjusting myself. Adjusting myself a little bit. There we go. Now the keyboard's like that. I am comfortable in this position. It is not pitch black, and I'm not going to be eaten by anything. Unless it's a... I don't, I don't know. What do I want to be eaten by? I want to be op eaten by the corporate mainstream. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure the corporate mainstream will find some way to make it a reality. They can have it. Eat me! Eat me, business leaders! Consume us! Or don't. Oh, you know what? Actually, that's a very... It's not a very happy position for Cameron because... Ow, that is a very, very hot laptop. Very hot laptop. My hand was in the space that occupied... In the space right next to my streaming laptop, which is where the heat vent is. It is very hot down there. It's very, very hot. I don't, I don't like that. It's very hot in my hands. It doesn't need to be this hot. Things don't need to be this hot. Big follows! You want to become famous? I want to become famous, but not by shit like that. That's the second one this time. I'll take care of you in a moment. I just got to finish this little strip I've got going on here. Silly strip. Silly strip. <gasps> it's disappeared! Thank you. Thank you, my mods. Thank you, Peach. Thank you, my Peach. If, if the Peach, if the Peach calling is becoming awkward, let me know. It doesn't have to be Peach. It could be any other fruit for that matter. Whatever fruit you want to be. What, fr how fruit are you feeling today? How fruit are we feeling today? I'm feeling very pear today. I'm feeling very pear today. Today feels like a very pear kind of day. And this is this is what I mean by that. This is a very abstract question, and I have a very abstract answer. I feel like pear today. I feel like pear because I feel like I'm always... Like, I feel like I, the favorite is always, like, the apple. But, like, there's something that's so close, yet so far from the apple. And that is the pear. And that is what I feel me to be. I feel that... It should be as conventional as the apple. However, it's just slightly, slightly different. It's not the normal. It's close to the normal, but it's slightly off. Meatball girl feels like a strawberry today. I actually, you know what's nice? My strawberries are growing. I have, I have, um, I have house plants because I can't have house pets. So instead, I put all this effort and love and affection into something that's alive in a different way oh what the, what's this oh well, what's this oh i could get more ski light i don't need all this cobble uh yeah but uh time to time to go back for a hot second i gotta go back to my hello there you hello there hello there zombie it's called a zombie how i forgot the word for zombie and for some reason thought it started with a G. Goblin. That's what my brain was thinking of. My brain got stuck on goblin, but it knew it wasn't goblin. You ever have those brain glitches where you're like, you're, you're, you're talking and you're, you're going, you're going and you're going and you're going and you want to say one thing, but the mind is like, the mouth is going, but the mind just like, no, no, no. You want to, you want to go in this direction. It's like you're driving down the road and you're still moving forward. You're driving down the road and you're still moving forward. And then all of a sudden, you're like, I need to turn off on this exit, I think. But I also think I either need to turn off on this exit or I need to turn off on, or I need to keep going on this road. And like one person's saying, you gotta get off the exit, you gotta get off the exit, you gotta get off the exit. But I'm just like, I don't know where to go next. Do, do, I, do I go off the exit or do I just stay my own course? Do I go off the exit? And then by the time it's too late, you're like, I guess I'll just get off the next exit. By the way, I was speaking about the infuriating tin before, you know, the old S, S, let's see, S, N is backwards, so, uh, uh, whatever, it's a matter, it's a mineral, uh, there's a ton of it down here, uh, we found that out much later, goblins and zombies are both green, so that's always a good thing, it's close enough, you know, close enough is good enough for me, I'm cool with that, all right. 
making my way back into the things. I can actually see when I get back into that loaded chunk of mine. I mentioned before that we've got the uh, dimensional anchor now. The dimensional anchor can keep certain um, chunks all loaded in at once. Currently, I have those red chunks over there loaded in. And with F9, I can actually see those, which is actually pretty cool. Every once in a while, I found out I find out new things about the mod pack that I'm playing because this is a really, really big mod pack. I didn't design it myself, so I'm always finding out about more of the mods in this. I haven't yet to explore them all, but I want to. And uh, I found I found out something new. Some of them are rather cosmetic. Some of them uh, not as much. Some of them are just they just exist, you know. And that's uh, that's that's pretty cool. And I like it. I like that there's always something more to explore. I've always loved games that just keep on gaming. Games that keep on gaming. They just keep on giving. Because, you know, you, you play the game for so long, and you thought, you're like, I think I've reached the end, but you haven't. A game like Minecraft feels that way to me. I mean, not necessarily vanilla Minecraft. I like vanilla Minecraft and whatnot, but I gotta be playing with somebody. I can't really just do that on my own, and you are out of power, so let's fix that. You still have a ton of... Why is there bio... Ch Why are you... No. No. Why are you sending things in there? Hold on one second. This is not fun. Let me send some things into here. You should not be using systems like that. Now, what I also don't want to do is I don't want to send things into here right now. I don't. So instead of what I usually do, where I throw all my stuff in here, uh, the, the digger stuff I'll put in there. That's fine. You you can package up my cobblestone. That's not a very energy-intensive thing. Um, Hunter's backpack is not usually a problem either. But anything I get in my miner's backpack, I'm going to put them somewhere completely different. I am just going to basically, just for a little while, I'm going to steal this chest here. I'm going to steal that. Give me that. Because it's a big old chest. It's a big old chest. I'm just going to temporarily keep anything that I want to do like that um over here i'm just gonna throw it in this chest for now what is it talking about i lost my train of thought look at that lovely and i should scan these too so some carbon got carbon dust from where very cool skelet's pretty nice tongue state appetite and lithium yellow right and lapis and a uh, pearls and glowstone dust and marold and coal and all this other stuff they're all hanging around. They're both green. They're both green. I was definitely... What was I chatting about? I forgot what my tangent was going on about. And just like that, the tangent ends because I forgot my place. That's okay. That is A-OK. -okay. In the meantime, I come back here. I go things back up again. I maybe recharge my laser a little bit. I figure out what the hell's going on with the... With the yeah, la 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 Fertilizer, fertilizer, fertilizer. Yeah, I should just turn this off completely. I'm not sure what's going on over there. You know what? I think I think I know what's happening, actually. These little wires right here, these little red wires, are connected back to the tree farm. This thing turns on if... Let's see. Items in inventory, red pipe signal. If the red pipe signal is on... If this is off, there is a redstone signal. It's not currently a redstone signal. If I am out of the area if this red wire goes between chunk boundaries that are not loaded at the same time it can sometimes glitch and do shit like this i don't want it to do that so instead what i should do temporarily is i should this is the i think i should just cut this i should just cut the cord i should just cut the cord cut the cord my dude cut it all up we don't need we don't need this system right now so I'm going to temporarily go over here. I'm going to find where that red wire leads. The red wire goes all the way to this way. The red wire you saw down there is the same red wire that goes all the way over here. I'm going to go to the very, very top. The tippy, tippy top up here. And just kind of, uh, yeah, let's, let's take this wire. Boop. Don't need it. Why did that not come off? Uh, there we go. Why is it still red? Why are you still red? You should have that when you're on, but you're still red. So that means there's something else on that line that is also causing it to be red. So what is it? What could it possibly be? Andy boy! 
Welcome back. Welcome back, Andy. Say hello to God for me. Yeah. All right. So what is causing this to be red? I, I do not know. Let's try to determine where the break is. If I snip it right here, what side is still red? It is in there. So the redness is coming from inside of there. I just, I just want to take that out in general. I'm going to take it out. I'm taking it outside. Going outside for a walk. Yeah, we're going, we're going outside. We're going to, we're going to chat for a little bit. You and me. You and me go to chat for a little bit. Oh, and I need to fix up the wires too. The batteries are out. Ugh. I don't like it when the batteries are out. I don't like it when the batteries go blah. When the batteries don't have no battery left to them, what do we do? Except cry. I'd cry. Let me just take all these, take all these batteries and exchange them for over here. Yep, you're completely empty. Completely and utterly empty. Just like what's inside. Just kidding! There's no need for emptiness. You know what? Let's look at the bright side of emptiness. Let's let's think about emptiness in a positive way right now. Emptiness is okay for this reason. Now you've got room for whatever else you want to put in there. It's okay to feel empty. Now you can fill it up with other things. I guess. And that sounds like a little... It, it, I don't know. Maybe that's the... Not sure how I feel about that thought. But there's a bright side to everything, and if there's a bright side to emptiness, I believe that that is the bright side. I'm okay with that bright side. For now. We're okay. We're okay with that bright side. Let me... Th where'd I put my batteries again? I lost my place. There. You. Take this battery. Take battery and have fun. Kill yourself. You are producing fertilizer. I can tell that you are because I see shit coming through my pipes. Because fertilizer is often used with cow manure, therefore I may properly refer to it as, as such. Properly refer- This is definitely shit. But like, shit for all the wrong reasons. It's shit because it's fertilizer. It's not shit because it actually came from some living individual. I'm not sure how it smells though. Perhaps it smells bad. Perhaps it does smell of methane. Disgusting. We don't need that. I don't need that. I had some things in my backpack. What did I put in my backpack? Oh, it's some enderpearls. That's fine. You can go in there. You can go in there. Put you into the storage system. Put you into the storage system. Let you go fly. Well, this probably... Are you uh, compressing? Nope. We've compressed all the cobblestone there is. Compression pants. No, what are you doing? I Again, we've, we've spoken of this. I don't want you to do that. Don't do that. Let's just... You're just disabled. You're disabled right now. You cannot put more stuff in here. So you won't. I won't let you. No more biomassing. We don't need any more sulfuric acid. Look at all this sulfuric acid. I don't need any more of this. There's no need. There is no need for more sulfuric acid. There are also things to be smelted. Um, the nickel comes by. Nickel comes about over here. Oh, what is... Whoa, that was cool looking for a hot second. Very easily distracted. This is all doing its stuff over here. Creates ammonia. Anyway, we know the deal. Time to go mining again. I'm going back for... I'm going back for more! But before I go back for more, let me, um... Let me... In let me charge up this little guy. Let me charge up my guy real quick. So that I don't, like, die when I hit the ground. Every once in a while, that little jetpack thing runs out of energy, and I will just plummet to the ground, and then... Just like that. It's a good thing there's always a percentage at the bottom of the screen, so I can always know whether I am about to plummet to my doom and meet whatever's on the other side myself. You never, you never know, you never know. I wonder what lies on the other side. What is on the other side, under, I wonder? I have no way of knowing. I wonder if everyone is still existing on the other side. Is everyone still existing on the other side? Just wondering about what's going on in the world right now. Like, if I if I pass on tomorrow, will I exist on the other side and be like, hmm, I wonder what's going on today. Quite simply, I'd like to think that I do. I would. I'm a rather curious individual. 
I'm sure we've all got our little curiosities about us and whatnot. I'd be curious to know what happens back on... Like, right now, I am forever curious of what happens on the other side. And when I'm on the other side, I'm going to be like, Whoa, what's going on on the side that I was on before? <laughs> I wonder how Steve's doing. I wonder how Clint's doing. Clint, our MIB guy from the Masturbation Awareness Bureau of the government. Clint, are you still watching? I don't got anything for you today. As you can see, my hands are clean. Literally, my hands are very clean. I washed them. And haven't given myself any- I haven't given myself any physical reason to dirty them again. So, this is good. So, uh, you're not getting me today, Clint. Clint, from the MAB. Brought to you by the United States government. Maybe? Who knows? They're watching through your phones, they can do whatever they want to. Speaking of watching through my phone, I recall I was uh, I was going to bed last night and I was just checking through Discord stuff and whatnot and I saw a few people in one of the Discord servers I've been they were all watching I think what was it the 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 one boxing match happened last night between like Logan Paul and the boxing guy I think his the last name is Mayweather but I don't remember his first name um, but the Mayweather v. Paul last night, I think that actually happened. I did not tune in for that. I did not tune in for that. But I did see on Reddit this morning, people complaining about how such a disappointment it was. What I, what I managed to uh, interpolate from what I've seen by the quotes from other people is that apparently it wasn't a very long fight. It wasn't a very satisfying fight. And apparently it did not end with a winner. Now, I did see one sort of explanation saying that apparently it was an exhibition fight, so there wasn't supposed to be a winner. You hope that uh, Paul got fucking pummeled. I hope that everybody got freaking pummeled. I mean, to be perfectly honest, it's a boxing match. Like, if they don't got a little blood on their cheek, a little looking like they just straight up walked out of an anime, like, and saw someone that they were totally into, then uh, I, I feel like it would be a pretty unsatisfying fight. If you don't walk out of a boxing match looking like you just saw your crush in an anime, I don't know if it was a very good match. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up a second. I came back here. By the way, I came back to the other island to recharge my wand, and I just noticed. This aura node is up on top now. That wasn't there before. Terra's over here. Aaron Ignis over here. We've got Aura here. Were you always on top? Were you always topping Aura Node Aqua 68 Auto 5? Because my wands were my wands are always bottoming. They're powering up on the bottom. So some could say they are indeed power bottoms. My wands, my wands are all power bottoms. How? Why? Because they are on bottom and they are powering up. Like Super Saiyan powering up. I remember, I think, <laughs> was it one of the, um, was it one of the Team 4 Star animations where maybe it's Frieza going, like, talking to Vegeta, like, I'm going to make sweet love with you, and Vegeta's just like, well, fuck you, because I'm a power bottom, or something like that, or, I don't remember what the animation was, I have not seen it recently, but it, bring, it brings me great joy. There are two people there are two people in my life who probably know exactly what I'm talking about and would be able to would be able to correct me. Uh <laughs> it's really funny. It makes me think of that. It also makes makes me think of the um from I, I, I realized it was from the Broly movie. From the from this uh, the um, the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie when Frieza kinda comes about, he walks outside and he greets all the Saiyans like ha 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 Hello, monkeys! And, um, I just remember a meme being shown to me by my brother last summer of the, that, that clip starting off. And as he goes, hello, monkeys! That immediately pans to a scene of two, um, two chimpanzees vigorously just going at it. And that, the shock of the transition made me laugh hysterically i'm like this is making me so incredibly uncomfortable in this moment but i switched from laughter to uncomfortableness so quickly that the laughter has not stopped and i don't know how to cope with this but it was lovely i did not i, I learned how to cope with it after the fact and i decided you know what tihi des funny and so i i remain that way i remain that way
And every time I imagine Frieza referring to the Saiyans as monkeys, I think of them screwing like monkeys because that image is in my head. Now, if I were much younger and I said this to like my teach my my guidance counselor or something at school they'd probably think there's something incredibly wrong with me but lo and behold i am now 23 years old and being that i'm not talking to any licensed physician i can say it all i want to and the only thought that people i feel like would have is you know what all right he's he's doing him he you, you do it you doing you i'm doing me we can all do we it's crazy you think that was what? Do you think it was one of Frieza's goons that was saying that? Who was saying the 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 monkeys? Maybe. Remember your mom raving about it years ago. Really? Was that years ago? I thought that was only about a year ago. I think that would happen last summer. I believe it happened last summer. Then again, my concept of time is uh, woohoo crazy. I do not have a very good concept of time right now. Oh, time to harvest my lilies. Like, my concept of time is totally out the window. I can barely remember, how, like, this week went by in a flash. Oh, that's okay. I mean, life moves on. I just gotta remember. So actually what I started doing to make up for that is the fact that I have, I have a little, um, I got a little notebook here that I write down things that happen in a day so that later on, if I wanted to, I can go back and recollect like, oh wait, what did I do today? Well, if it was dated as today, that must mean it happened today. And I like to, sometimes I for, forget what happened today and what happened yesterday or what happened the day before because time is just a fickle thing when you're staying indoors all the time. So I like to use this as a, an activity to remind me when things happen, um, so that I can, you know, reinforce those mental connections, those little ne those neuron connections in my brain. Because that's necessary. That is very, very necessary to remember things. Usually I'm pretty good with memorizing things. Apparently, in the past, I've been able to memorize entire scripts, which is cool. And the lines that obviously go into them, but, you know, I haven't done that in a while. So that type of, that muscle, that brain muscle of mine has not been, um, exercise recently so you yeah, try to do it in other ways try to work your brain out as much as you can when school ends and school is almost over for me i have about a week left of school and then colleague colleague is over colleague will now be over for me and i'm okay to move on with that i've always been the the kind of person who kind of accepts when changes happen like, I was always of the mindset that the quicker that I become comfortable with this change or the the quicker that I learn to cope with it or be able to use this change to my advantage in some way, then the easier time I will have um, coping with that change. And oftentimes, the coping of the change manifests by merely adjusting to it. Like, that's, that's I guess, my form of coping, I suppose but I try to accept things. Like, for example, when I was finished with high school, I, there was a moment where I was very aggressively not wanting to go to college. I eventually moved in, and I, have a really, I had a really hard time adjusting and whatnot. I really just wanted to be at home. I missed my parents. I missed my brothers. I missed my room. I missed my bed, and I kind of broke down a little bit, but after the fact, I kind of just came in. I, I got that out of my system, and then things were more or less okay uh going forward aside from like the stress of you know trying to adjust to a whole new set of schoolwork realizing that oh just because i got a's in high school does not necessarily mean that i'm gonna get a's in college and college is a lot harder and you shouldn't beat yourself up for not doing as well as you did before like don't get me wrong improve always be com i always always try to compare yourself to your past self and not necessarily other people because when you compare yourself to your lot to your past self, you can see where you've improved. But also when you're doing the comparison, also like make sure that there you're not just doing like a very like one dimensional comparison. If you were going from high school to college and you realize the thing that has changed is the grades, also realize that you're also taking completely different courses now. You might be in a completely different study set. You're in a completely different environment and that too can affect things. It's not just what's wrong with me. Something must have changed in me. Odds are, 
on the transition between high school and college, maybe you haven't changed so much in that break within that transition. Your environment is what's changed. And then over time, you will change along with it. A lot of people are like that when they move. Oh, for sure. And when they go to other countries. And uh, the last time Meeple was in England alone, that happened to you. I, I feel I feel that. My When I relocated, basically re up and relocated myself to Philadelphia, I was like, wow, this is, this is not fun. Uh, but some changes I totally, totally welcomed. For instance, when I finally, when I got out of my fraternity house, which by the way, I loved living in my fraternity house and it was a wonderful like camaraderie that I felt while I was there. However, there came a certain point where there were too many things that I could pick on and be like, I don't like this, I don't like that, and I don't like this, and I want to change that. I don't want to be in this situation because of all of these other things. And so when I managed to move out and I moved in with my fiance, I was a much, much happier camper. And I was a much happier camper with that. So like, and, uh, and now I'm here. I am, I am very, very happy with my surroundings. I personally do not feel very outside in my surroundings right now. Like outside is in like, like uncomfortable. Like this isn't a place of comfort for me. I'm very comfortable in my little corner over here. I've got my desk. I've got everything I could ever need. I consider this to be like my at home laboratory. And I like the idea of having my laboratory. This is like my space to do what I want to do and and beyond just the concept of me as well what i like to do is hope to be able to influence other people by it as well i don't like to do things in my environment over here that makes my fiance for example feel uncomfortable because if she's uncomfortable ultimately i'm feeling uncomfortable and um, i can't seem to eat my pb and j eat the pb and j please eat the pb and j please eat the pb and j eat the sandwich! Why will you not eat the sandwich? I tell you, eat the sandwich! I say eat the sandwich! Steve, eat the sandwich! Where'd my sandwich go? Eat the sandwich. Eat the freaking sandwich. I'm talking about my- I'm talking about the life here! Thank you for eating the sandwich. Anyway. But the things that I am able to do from this desk, I hope, extend beyond just this desk. I was seeing, uh, I was watching um, a TikTok the other day by somebody named Tayzonde. You may recognize the name because he's the guy who did Chocolate Rain way back in the days of the YouTube poops and stuff like that. Um, but he did Chocolate Rain, he did the Cherry Chocolate Rain, and I started seeing him on TikTok. I'm like, oh my god, that's the guy! That's the guy! I was young when I started watching that stuff, and I remember Chocolate Rain! Na, 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 na. Such nostalgia. Anyways, but he was he was kind of chatting about oh you don't have enough energy do you you don't have enough energy ah now I need to do the energy stuff again back downstairs but he was kind of talking about how he apparently is like a very introverted person and a little socially awkward and whatnot and he was talking about that but he's like when he appears on like live calls and things like that he uh, he described himself as he described himself as feeling as seeming very very confident and very very comfortable and that's because he's in a space that he manages like he exists in that space because it was something of his design like my space over here is by my design i feel very comfortable in a space that i have designed for the purposes like, for example i wouldn't have all my posters up there if I wasn't comfortable with it, I wouldn't have my little my little Mickey Mouse thing that my brother made for me if I wasn't comfortable with it. I, for one, for example, some like and I've mostly seen this in media. I don't ex I don't exactly know any people personally who had this type of stuff up in their room, but I'd seen in like old like ninety movies and whatnot. When you went to the when you when you the camera went to the boys' room, you'd see like Sports Illustrated on the wall, or like a like a per, a little like a girl in a bikini or something like that on the wall because like that's what the boy you know that's what the boy puts in their room. Maybe that makes them feel comfortable at the time. I don't have that stuff up in my apartment because it doesn't make me feel comfortable i'm sure if i had like some scantily clad woman up on this wall over here or even a scantily clad men for that matter for a while anna had a calendar of sexy firefighter men up in the room and that was just hilarious by the way i thought it was incredibly funny and it made her more uncomfortable than it made me uncomfortable but i would laugh about it but I, aside from that, if I had something like that up on my wall over here, I'd be very rather uncomfortable of it. And when I was sharing my space with another human being back in the fraternity house, every once in a while, I'd go into the room and see something like this. And I'm just like, you know, what? that's that's you doing you. But if I had to exist in this space alongside, I'd probably be like, I wouldn't I wouldn't be uncomfortable to the point where I would say anything about it because that's not my stuff. It's not a, not really any of my business. 
and I wouldn't want to make I wouldn't want to impose upon my roommate to be like hey can you take that down like it, unless it was significant unless it was significantly affecting me mentally but it but just a small little bit of uncomfortable but like I don't feel any bits of uncomfortableness in this space around here it is very very comfortable and I like that and as uh, Mr. Zande would be saying, while well, he's on his calls and whatnot, in his comfortable space, it's a maintained space. It's something that he has full control over. It makes him feel very comfortable. It makes him seem very confident on camera. And I like to feel that way as as well. Hope hopefully, the confidence comes through, at least what I would consider to be the confidence, or at least the positivity of it all. I hope that if I can take that confidence that I feel and funnel it into something that is positive so that other people may feel the positivity of all, or somebody else may, may feel the confidence of it all, then I feel like I've done something right. And ultimately, I, I feel like if I had to come from a completely selfish standpoint, I, I wanna feel good. I wanna feel like I'm doing good. And when I when I feel like I do good, I, I feel good. I, I think everybody wants to feel good in some way, shape or form. I feel like some people might wanna feel bad every once in a while, and that's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We're only human and if you want to feel bad, that's okay. Sometimes we need to feel bad. We need to just let that anger out of our systems. We're only human. And because we are human, we have the the opportunity to feel bad sometimes. And it's okay to feel bad. I hope not that some individuals are feeling bad like all the time. But if I wish I could help with that. If there was anything that I could do to help with that, I really wish that I could. Because honestly, I, I I don't like... I The other day, I went and returned something to Amazon. Uh, I had, had to return something to Amazon. My mom got me this new razor thing, and it really wasn't up to speed. Speed. I got a really nice close shave, though. I feel so comfortable in my upper lip area. I feel so wonderful up here because she got me this razor, and she also got me like a new shaving cream to go along with it. The razor sucked, but the shaving cream actually made my regular shaving activities a lot more comfortable. So I returned the razor at the store the other day, and the, the gentleman behind the counter just didn't seem like he wanted to be there. Um, he was just kind of sitting there, and I'm like, hey, so, sorry to bother you, like, I need to make a return and whatnot, would you mind helping me with that? And he's like, yeah, hand him the thing, scan the QR code, slap the label on the, the razor box, and was just like, all right, you're good, have a, have a good rest, you know, see ya. And I'm like, well, you have a wonderful rest of your day, too. And I felt... As I walked through the rest of Whole Foods to pick up something else, I was picking up some... I don't have any mayonnaise in the house, so I got myself some mayonnaise. It's vegan mayonnaise, which is not... I, I just wanted to try that. I wanted to try vegan mayonnaise. It ain't too bad. Certainly not mayonnaise, but it's may it's, it's A's nonetheless. But I felt almost, like, helpless in that scenario because I was like, I feel like... Could I have done something more... Could, could I have said something more positive to, to maybe see a smile on this gentleman's face? I don't, I don't know if I could, and I try not to dwell on it too much, because there's only so much you can do in a, in a scenario like that, like, you know, there's only so much you can do in the minute that you have interacting with somebody, so how do you make the most of those, oh my god, it's a tiny little guy, how do you make the most of those minutes? And so I feel the same way. I had a, another in interesting instance where when I was hanging out with my uh, with my family for my youngest brother's birthday uh, earlier uh, in the month, about a week ago, we went to Panera Bread, and I, we got a pretty big we got a pretty big family, right? And so oftentimes you're just kind of standing at the counter and you're waiting for the entire order to be filled. And a lot of times the cashiers are not very happy with this many people ordering things at once and whatnot. I, I think I see the most disturbance when we're like in the drive through line and you're just like, this is the drive through lady. You shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be ordering for your entire family here. You should come inside and order like that. And personally, I disagree with that. If I want to make a big order at the drive through that's exactly what I'm going to do. But hopefully I can do whatever I can to make you feel as not so negative as possible with the long and drawled on experience of taking my, my and my family's orders. But anyway, we got the cashier, we made the long order, uh, we got the cashier, we made the long order, and behind us in line was an individual who seemed like they were very, very impatient to be there. And, like, it wasn't just they were standing there, like, normal-faced, or, like, resting bitch-faced or anything like that. It wasn't like that. Like, they were visibly, they had the receipt in their hand, they were sitting there, they were kind of 
tapping their feet every once in a while. They were readjusting their weight as they were standing in the back of line behind my mother as she was completing the order, or as behind me and everybody else in my family as we one at a time made our orders. And interestingly enough, before we even finished our order, before we were even done ordering, um, this individual like kind of bopped in front of us and just like, hi there, I just, I, I have a, I need to talk to you about what's on my receipt right now. And, you know, my, the cashier was kind of finishing up with us, but I felt bad for a moment. I was like, I don't know, this cashier is about to be in for something unpleasant for them, I think. And I was kind of overhearing the conversation as we went by and she was the, 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 the individual was very complanatory about the fact that apparently they had got chips with their dish, but the salad came up as a separate charge on the receipt and all, you know, all that needed to be done was just to remove that from there because it was an honest mistake. And so the the cashier, um, I, I guess, didn't really choose the words super accurately. Uh, the cashier said, well, there's nothing that I can do about that. And then a couple sentences later was like, but I, was, but I can get my manager to take it off for you because the cashier, I don't think, has the ability at the register to remove something from the receipts and to be able to like do refunds like that i assume like you need a certain level of clearance for example a managerial position to be able to have the right to do that at the cashier but the individual who was behind us was continually giving the cashier a very very hard time and getting a little heated about it and i was like i feel so bad for this cashier right now and i hope that whatever had been whatever we had done when we were making our order, didn't, like, make it any worse for them. So afterwards, we were at Panera Bread, right? So we go back up, and I picked up some of the other, some of the orders afterwards, and I didn't actually see the cashier when we were picking things up, but I had made to the best of my ability, had mentioned to the other employees, like, by the way, I never got a chance to say to my cashier over there, but can you just pass on the message to them, like, that, you know, thanks for dealing with our big family order, because we really appreciate it. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we'll pass it on for you, no problem. And that was that was gonna that was gonna be it. That was gonna be like, you know what? I had a couple extra moments to try to make better of that situation for somebody else. So I wanted to put in a little extra, just a couple extra words to you know kinda kinda do that. And lo and behold, like I came back up later because I was picking up like a, a fork or whatever, a utensil, and the cashier was just like and I was like, by the by the way, oh I didn't get a chance to see you before, but I just wanted to say thank you. He's like, no, no, no problem at all. Like y'all were y'all were okay compared to the uh to, you know they, they didn't actually say compared to the other person but they were like no nah, you guys you were you were fine you were fine and i felt really good about that and lo and behold there was a smile on the cashier's face and honestly that 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 didn't for me you know, the person behind us in line definitely felt rather karen like rather karen like and don't get me wrong my mother can be rather karen like sometimes but that wasn't this time it wasn't her this time it was somebody else completely but i felt I feel really good about that. I felt like really, really good about that. I felt like perhaps the, the day that could have been worse was not so worse. And honestly, I, I like to think of it this way, right? If you were, if you were to take, let me, let me illustrate this for a moment. If you've got two sides of the number line, right? You've got, I guess these are kind of the same looking on camera. If you've got, let's see. If this is the positive side of the line, and this is the negative side of the line. I hope that anything that I do in my in my personal goal of attempting to be a good Samaritan in life, I hope we are never over here, never in the negative area. I hope to goodness that whatever I have the power, like of the little power that I have in this world, I hope that I can get anybody else of the influence over here to the positive area, or at the very least, oops, I keep whacking my microphone. At the very least, if somebody is currently here, to get them here. The fist is the zero point. In my opinion, zero point and beyond is positive. Anything below zero is negative. It might not be a net positive, but if if we were to move anybody forward towards the positive side, I think that is a total win. And I guess the selfishness of it all is because I want I want to feel good and I feel good I feel really good when I can like see a smile on someone's face I feel really good about that and like I was mentioning before I'm just all in for that serotonin I I want that but I also saw somebody else speaking on behalf of that the other day as well and they were like I don't care what your reason is I I don't care what your reason is to be a good person 
like if it's because of whatever religion you practice that you have a moral compass to do good that's wonderful if you have certain familial obligations like you're trying to you're trying to uphold your reputation to be a good person then that's totally fine it doesn't matter what your reason is for being fine so so for being like attempting to be a good person so long as you're just putting good into this world and i i totally i totally vibed with that i was like you know what if it's selfish of me to want to feel good by doing good for others then i totally accept that selfishness i am totally happy to be that kind of a selfish person if it means that there will be a net good for other people and i'm i like that it, it makes me feel very warm and fuzzy inside well not like physically like warm and fuzzy i'm not the kind of guy who gets those butterflies and whatnot which was a also a topic of conversation the other day my uh, my mother and i were talking about relationships if you haven't caught on by the way i talk with my mother a lot i like to i like to talk with my mother i talk with my father a bit though too but he's a little more soft-spoken so the conversations don't always have they don't happen as frequently but when they do happen they are also filled with as much meaning as uh, as are before as they could be oh hello zomble please don't touch me don't touch <gasps> Woo! don't touch but i was talking to her about uh relationship stuff not like I needed to get it off my chest. We were just on the topic of relationships and we were talking about relationship stuff. And she was like, yeah, you know, when I met your father, I got those, I got those butterflies in my tummy. You know, you get those butterflies. You ever experienced the butterflies, Cameron? I'm like, I have never experienced the butterflies. Not, I, I don't, I have never experienced the butterflies for a, like a relationship reason. Like I've never looked at a person and be like, oh, I am feeling, like I know what the butterflies are. I, I know what they are because I felt them for other things. Um, mostly feelings of uncomfortableness or when you're going like down the roller coaster like as you're going down you feel like you're st in the pit of your stomach that feels like the butterflies to me something similar to that but I don't feel it for the relationship stuff and you know I've had other people ask like but you have but you have a fiance how do you have you not felt the butterflies with your fiance do you think that perhaps that means that she is not the one for you like there's something else there like that you're not getting the butterflies I'm like no there's so much more to it than that. It can't be so... It can't be so summarized as... Oh, you get the butterflies? I mean, she's the one. Because those butterflies just don't exist for that very reason. I mean, to be honest, if I had to compare it to my own butterflies... If I feel the butterflies with somebody, that means I've got this very uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach. And that doesn't feel very positive at all. But like, you know, you don't need those butterflies. You don't need those butterflies. It could be something completely different. Whatever your definition of the good butterflies are and i think the good de my definition of the good butterflies when it comes to feeling the butterflies in a relationship is not something it ain't something down here it's something up here or rather a lack of something up here it's a lack of excuse me it's a lack of inhibitions it's a lack of whoa hi there holy shit oh my god excuse me yeah you know that you know that Oh, that adrenaline rush. Okay. Things freaking popping out of nowhere. Anyways, it's that feeling. It's that feeling of <laughs> the adrenaline rush in your brain. You look at somebody that you like, and all of a sudden you go like, Wow, she's definitely the one for me. That's exactly the kind of feeling that you get. Like, no. Oh my god, that gives you like a heart attack. These freaking Geonox coming out of nowhere. Anyways, it's a feeling up here. Rather, it's a lack of a certain feeling. That feeling is not uncomfortable that feeling is not feeling like you gotta you gotta hold back your true self my original like criterion for if i'm gonna marry someone what well, young me being like if i'm gonna marry someone someday i just want one thing you know in the very in the very naive way of being being a young person and being like oh i i think everything is super duper simple things can be simple if you want them to be and i think it, i keep it simple keep it simple stupid the one requirement is if if I can be accepted for who I am at any point in time because I'm a constantly changing individual and I like, can't always be upfront with exactly who I am because I'm constantly in that state of flux. I am like an an amalgam of an amalgam of personalities all mashed up together and during any particular moment I could be any one of them depending on how I depending on how I read the situation. And if somebody can accept that, then I am that that's the per that's the person for me. And um, spoiler alert, I I feel like I found somebody like that. But that's but that's beside the point. That's kind of how that's kind of my thoughts on the matter. 
whether it comes to relationships and things like that. And of course, of course, when it comes like that, just because somebody feels that way towards me, I hope, you know, do unto others as you do unto yourself. Like, I hope I do the same. And uh, every once in a while, I don't, I don't feel like I do the same. But I notice that, right? Because I feel like it matters, I notice those moments when I do something that I'm like, well, I, if I were talking to me, I certainly wouldn't have said that. And I feel bad about it for a moment, but that's okay to feel bad about it. Because that feeling of badness is, is the bad feeling up here. It's the bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. It's like, oh, that didn't feel so good. I don't want to experience this badness again. So I'm going to change things up next time to make sure that, yeah, you know what? What I've got, what I do next time, when this situation comes up again, I am better prepared to make a decision that I myself would be proud of. Or that the other people who are being influenced of it would be proud of. If I'm like, if I'm like talking to somebody and I'm talking to, let's say, the cashier at the register and I'm just like, yep, you have a wonderful, awesome rest of your day. And I scream at them. I might feel really good about it because I said thank you, but I screamed. So maybe, maybe they all of a sudden look like, whoa, dude. Um, okay. Th thanks then. I may read that situation as, all right, something about what I did was not right. Was it the fact that I said thank you? No, I don't think so. Maybe it was the fact that I raised my voice. That's that's probably what it was. And perhaps next time, learning as the individual constantly changing as we all have, I'm sure everybody, all of us are, constantly changing individuals. And then the next time that happens, if I ever get in a situation like that where I need to thank the cashier again, which happens often, maybe I'll tone my voice down a little bit. And if I don't get that feedback of, whoa, dude, chill, then I'll feel like I've done something right there. I mean, you know, always, always changing, always changing, always rearranging. That's I, I think that's honestly, I feel like that's who all of us are. If we all look deep enough into ourselves, we'll find that we're all constantly changing and that the adjectives that we would use to describe, like if we had, if we, everybody had a dictionary entry or a thesaurus entry, maybe not a dictionary. I don't think we can, I don't think anybody can be summed up in like a particular dictionary definition, but I feel like there may be an, a non-exhaustive list of adjectives that describe us. And every once in a while, I'm sure if I look, if I opened up the, so the source of people and picked any particular person and kept checking back on them, kept checking back on one of us every single day, I wouldn't, if I looked through that non-exhaustive list of adjectives, they would be changing and they'd be rearranging if there was a priority order there, depending on what type of list we got going on here. But anyway, data structures. I'm sure we could constantly changing, constantly, constantly changing. And there's no one ex exhaustive list of adjectives to describe anybody in a particular day. Now, it, there may you may be able to describe someone on a particular day. Like you could probably describe me by like 10 dictionary words today. And after the fact, those words can't change because I can't change the past. So in that regard, in a particular day, but if you were to always look at the present, always look at to what's going on right now, that list will always be changing. And I think that there was a bright side to that. Because if you were the kind of person who has made some mistakes in the past, I, I've made mistakes in the past. I've done things in my life that I am not particularly proud of. Um, a lot of times it's interacting with certain individu individuals, like I've said before, maybe not the cashier, but like maybe somebody I knew in like my previous years of high school or something like that. And uh, I think back to like the experiences that I had and the way that I interacted with them. And if I feel like I've left it off at a sour point, I, I feel bad about it, but I want to change it. Because I don't want to feel bad about that. So maybe try to make up for it. Like I can make, we can all make decisions today to attempt to, maybe not for sure fix the the bad things of the past or the, the uncomfortable scenarios of the past, but we can try to. And that goes into the whole, like we're all, we're all human. Like we all get angry sometimes, or we all should be able to get angry sometimes. We all get sad sometimes, or rather we all should be able to get sad sometimes and that's totally okay and on that on that note if everybody were to be able to feel comfortable with being able to get sad sometimes perhaps we'd have that level of being able to level with other people like yeah yeah you know what dude it's okay that you were angry at me you lashed out it's okay i forgive you for that because like i get angry and i lash at other people sometimes too like 
far be it far be it from me to look at another person and say like hey you know what i don't like you because you did you spoke to me a certain way that's i don't i don't like that and therefore i don't like you well i mean who am i to say something like that i've said mean things to other people sometimes i mean don't get me wrong it can go farther with that you could be like well you said something mean to me and you didn't apologize well, I've said mean people things mean things to people and didn't apologize for whatever the reason was. I've done that before. So is what you is what this individual did really really like totally unforgivable? No, I don't think it is. I, I don't I, I can't think of now don't get me wrong. Things could go a lot farther than that. For example, yo, you murdered somebody. I can't forgive you for that. Well, I've never murdered somebody in my life. Not yet, at least. I haven't been brought to that point. But, uh... I'm sure there may come a reason someday. Perhaps. But I can't... I can't relate on that one. But I can relate to other aspects. Like, okay, well... Why? Why did it happen? Can you give me a reason why? Oh, just because I wanted to. Okay, well... I suppose... In that regard... It's not like I haven't done really outlandish things that are morally unacceptable just because I wanted to and I can't think of any particular I, I can't think of any particular instance right now and what the why was that flashing weird I can't think of any particular instance right now of me being me doing a morally unacceptable action just because I wanted to I'll say what's morally unacceptable? I wanted pineapple pizza you know what? You murdered somebody just because you wanted to. You did a morally unacceptable action just because you wanted to. You sick, sick individual. But you know what? I've put pineapple on pizza before just because I wanted to. And also olives. Sue me. Morally unacceptable. So because I've done that, because I too have done something morally unacceptable just because I wanted to, I can forgive you for something that you've done that is morally unacceptable just because you wanted to. And forgiveness means something completely different depending on the individual. Totally understandable. Totally, totally understandable. Uh, it seems that I've... Oh, I've kind of used up all my cobblestone. Nice. Put everything in the chest. But like, I don't know. If you want to relate to somebody online, like, you, you have to want to forgive. Like, if you, do, if you do not want to forgive, I do not think you'll be able to reliably bring yourself to a point where you can. Or you know what? If you don't want to forgive, I, I would I would think perhaps a better way to look at it is like you sh if you want to you don't want to forgive yet. It's that word of yet. Maybe you don't want to forgive now, but perhaps you'll be able to later. I don't I don't personally I, I don't vibe well with the phrase I can't forgive you. I don't think it's about not. Like, if you cannot, that means there is no physical way, no no conceivable way for you to forgive a particular person. It just sounds, I don't know, it feels bad. And I mean, it. I'm sure it does feel bad. And it might be a very, very real, real thing that you are, that you may feel that you cannot possibly forgive somebody. But like on the bright side of things, you can always, ch I feel like you can always change your perspective. Everybody always changes every single day and something might happen. I have no, I don't even know what that something is, but something might happen to, to kind of adjust that statement just a little bit. I can't forgive you yet to add a little yet in there for whatever reason. And I'm a big believer in yet. I haven't murdered anybody yet. Uh, something may change something may something crazy may happen and all of a sudden I am brought to a point where I have a conceivable reason to murder somebody I'm not there yet I hope I don't get there I can hope all I want to but I can't tell you for sure that I won't murder somebody someday because I don't know my future self I haven't met him yet so how can I be so sure that he's not gonna kill somebody I me right now I'm not gonna kill anybody per like as a like Physically, there is nobody around me to kill right now. I cannot kill it. I cannot physically kill somebody. Um, although perhaps the words I say, perhaps one of the words I say is like one of those, you know, like the, the um, Bucky from uh, the, the Winter Soldier in the Marvel Universe, the code words that get them to like turn on the kill switch. The words I say right now might be a trigger for somebody to just up and die. And if that is the case, I hope 
for all intents and purposes that you are not watching right now. I hope that you are the type, if you are the type of person who, if you hear gibbledygob, that will just straight up die for your safety, please don't tune in. Don't do it. I don't want to feel like I could be held responsible for that. And also, I think my music shut off. So uh, let's, uh, let's, oh, nope, it was still going. All right, cool, cool, cool. Nice, nice. Back to, back to Minsraft. Back to Minsraft that I changed my music around. But if you're that, if you were that person, I hope to goodness that you are not tuning in. And if you have tuned in and you are now convulsing on the floor because of me saying Gibble to Gob, I am so sorry. But I didn't know. But if that's the case, I hope Sony makes me aware of it so I can make a sign. Warning, Ghibli, gibberish is stated. Words are stated. No words are off limits. Actually, some words are off limits. Some words are off limits. Let me take that back. Racial slurs are not appreciated. I've said that before and I will say it again. I just don't, I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel comfortable and it doesn't, it doesn't make us feel comfortable. It doesn't make us feel comfortable. Us, and I mean, I, I was actually, I was looking into things the other day. Um, this is actually, this is actually really, really cool. So my, I did a playthrough of this Disney game that was, I think, originally on the Sega Genesis. Um, but they have a piece, they have a PC port for it on Steam. And it's called The Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. And I think it's some Sega game or whatever. But so uh, my fiance and I played through it. Uh, Anna and I, Anna and I played through it. And we, it was only a three session thing. They weren't very long, but we really enjoyed it. It was a little platformer game. Anna's not super good at platformers, but it's really fun to be able to play them with you, with her. We kind of hot seated it, right? So we had a timer that every time the timer would go over three minutes, we would switch the control of the other person. And that was really, really fun. And we really, really enjoyed it. And apparently that first video, I back everything up to YouTube so that, you know, they are always stuck around for, for forever. I just want to make sure that everything is there. If I ever needed to go back to it, it's all up there for anybody to enjoy. And for my own reference, in case I ever needed to go back to it. And that first video has over 300 views right now. None of my, none of, none of the stuff on the stream archives gets anywhere close to that. Most of them don't even hit a dozen. But that one in particular, I don't, I don't know exactly what circumstances led to it. It's the YouTube algorithm, the YouTube algorithm thing. I think I have to blame the fact that Disney is in the title, and so is Mickey Mouse. So that's it's popular. It's mainstream media. But that's gotten so many views on it. And it's gotten a few likes too. And I'm like, I'm astounded. I'm like, there's, I, I can't believe it. This is so cool. Like I never. I don't I never thought at all that anything would happen to anything that this this community that we're attempting to build up here could put out there. And it's really cool. And I mean that's the thing, like this is not this is not because of something that I did. I I mean ultimately really really the only thing that I did was play a video game. And that's that's the extent of what we had there. That was the extent of what I personally have done to make things happen like that. Probably no more than that. I played a game, Anna and I played a game, we played a game, and that was it. That's that's all we did, we put it out there. And it was the rest of, it was, it was not me, it was everybody else who got it to that point. And honestly, if I could say, like, if I could, if I could say, tell them, like the, the 300 people who have just, just viewed it. They didn't watch the whole video. Most of them did not. But if I could say like, yo, Th thank y'all like y'all don't y'all don't think it means a lot to me but it like it really does it's really cool to be able to see those things the other day as well i've mentioned before that i have a uh i have a tiktok and i used to not be proud of that i am proud of that now because the other day i posted a funny video or at least i thought it was funny anna thought it was funny my parents thought it was funny my brothers thought it was funny so i thought you know what Let's let's put it out there, and I did, and I got like over a hundred likes, and that does not seem significant at all to most people. I am certainly, I am certainly no, we are certainly no influencers here. And by the way, if you've noticed, I've been trying to use a little less of I and a little more of we. Conscious conscious effort here, because I real I realized the other day, it's not, I don't want to do this necessarily for me. I actually I actually wrote a whole. I was doing a little soul searching the other day, and I wrote a whole list down of things that I want to accomplish with uh, some of my hobbies. Streaming being one of my hobbies right now. And I don't necessarily want to do it 
just for me. Because I felt like... Originally, I started doing this because I was like, I want to play the games that I want to play. I want to give myself an excuse to play video games and just chill out and do that. And, you know, potentially, potentially make some money on the side because that's what you can get on Twitch. People subscribe on Twitch and whatnot. It just, it seemed like something like, hey, you know what? I want to play video games anyway. I might as well stream it on the side and perhaps, perhaps good things will happen. But I was looking at, I was doing some soul searching the other day and I was like, you know, that just, that felt like it wasn't a morally good reason to stream. And honestly, it made me feel pretty lazy, too. It made me feel like, well, I just play my games. That's all I do. That all I do is play games. And then if I play games enough, people will be like, yes, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in and pay to watch this. It just it didn't feel good. It really didn't feel good about it. And I'll, I'll admit it. These past uh, the past couple weeks, I just kind of felt that uneasiness. Something inside of me felt like I was not doing something right. And um, I, I originally chalked it up to the fact that, you know, I'm graduating in like a week. Uh, my plans are a little up in the air right now. And that uncertainty of where I'm going, like where I'm headed to next, bothers me. And I thought that was the main reason. I thought that was the main reason. And it probably is still one of those reasons. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure it's still weighing on my head somewhere. But there was something else that felt a little closer. And that something else that felt closer was the fact that I was like, you know what? I've been, I feel like maybe the streams have not all been there and i realized i felt like i wasn't get getting uh i wasn't getting what i wanted from it and that's why i did some searching on it and one of the things that i came to the conclusion of was that you know i, I thought about i thought about things i used to watch a lot of like uh, uh specifically markiplier i used to watch a lot of markiplier when i first entered college eventually he started doing a lot of the uh, theatrical stuff that he did and for one reason or another i i stopped watching and i didn't realize it until now i apparently i unsubscribed which i mean at the time felt like really really insignificant but i was thinking about it and i was like why did i do that because i still have i have i have a poster i have a little print of our marky moo over there on my wall him and tiny box tim and i was like why do i still have that if it was ins if it was insignificant why do i still have that on my wall why is it that when i look at that when I look at that poster, when I look at that print of mine, that I get this feeling of like, yeah, you know what? He's he he's done it. He's done it. And I really enjoy watching those videos when I was when I was a little younger. Why can't you know, you know, I felt almost as if maybe maybe that could be some maybe that could be something too. If if I if I could do something like that and be able to be able to allow people to feel that way because of something that I did or something rather rather something that we as a community have done as of as of this stream right now I have 82 followers on here I have 10 subscribers on YouTube and it's it's mostly it's mostly hobby stuff it's like it's not like it's not a hobby in the sense that I don't put effort into it it's not a hobby as in like oh you know like I, I draw as a hobby because I just I just like doing it. Like some people spend a lot of monies on their hobbies, rightfully so I think. And my realization was that you know, if this is a hobby of mine, that could be something more than it actually is. Something more than just playing video games or just making like for example I. I make cocktails too on the stream as well. I, I love making cocktails. I love to just express my hobbies in a live manner because not necessarily because I just want it on camera, but to be able to think like I gained some, I gained some joy from this. I, I've gained a lot of joy from playing video games. It is a nice and relaxing thing that I have not allowed myself the opportunity to do in past years. And it brings me some happiness and it makes me smile. And if what makes me smile can also make you smile. Then that's like, that's like another one of those like, that's another like. That's, it feels to me like another like on that YouTube video or another heart on that TikTok or another like on Facebook. I don't really use a lot of Facebook or the same thing on Instagram. That's what it feels like. And I mean, aside from just focusing on the numbers at all, just the fact that one person 
liked that. Whether or not they were just kind of scrolling through and just like, oh yeah, something camera posted. I like that. He's a cool guy. Whatever. People from like high school, I assume. I don't assume the random denizens of the internet are going to be like, this is a cool, pretty cool guy. I would not expect that. That that would be pretty cool. I feel like I'm a pretty cool guy. But, you know, that one like, my brother, my brother said it, my youngest brother said it like very, very simply and very plainly. He's like, yeah, you, the, at least for that, that TikTok video that I posted. It's a, it's, it's funny. It's, it's about, if you like zucchinis, check it out. I like zucchinis a lot. So you, you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. But so he's like, you made a hundred people smile. You made at least a hundred people smile, at least for a brief moment. Maybe they weren't even smiling physically. Maybe they were smiling like internally. And that's why they clicked. It was something, something along the lines that I will call a smile for lack of a better term, led them to like it. Maybe they chuckled. Maybe they laughed. Maybe it was something more than that. But it all gets summed up into that little heart. I saw that the other day, and I was like, wow. That is really, really cool. Because, like, uh, I, I remember the days back in high school when I used to do uh, a lot of, like, high school performance and whatnot for the theater department. And coming out after the show... And, like, hearing all the applause and whatnot, and aside from the fact that applause is just something you do just because everybody else does it, like, some people are applauding because they absolutely loved the show. And I was, I had the opportunity to be a part of that show that made people feel this way. That is so cool that I had the opportunity to be a part of that. And that's how I see it nowadays. That's, that's how I feel like I should be seeing it, um, going forward. It's not, ju just be, just because... Just because I am the person who's on the stage, and I am the one who- Oh, it's exercise time! Work that body! What do we got? Hopscotch? I like hopscotch. I gotta take my slippers off, though, or else I'll slip all over the floor. But yes, if I can be- Actually, this is a really awkward position. I can't play Minecraft like that, so let's let's do that first. Uh, I need to move my chair out of the way. I'm running out of space. There we go. Chair out of the way. There we go. Now I can hopscotch. There we go. I'm doing some hopscotch while I'm talking about- deep things it's good but so my thought is like just because i am the person behind the camera at any particular group point in time sometimes anna and i are behind the camera sometimes i got my friends on like meatball girl and lycos and final rhapsody uh every once in a or thank i guess when we're all hanging behind this screen it feels like we like we're putting on a performance we as the community are putting on the performance it's not about just the channel in general. It's not just about the Twitch. It's not just about the YouTube. It's about the conglomeration of everything together to create as much difference as possible. And by difference, I mean a positive one. And that's, I don't know. That's what I've been, that's what I've been thinking about. Cute. Yeah, I've been, I've been told it's pretty cute. Thank you. Thank you. Naturally, I get told it's cute all the time by my fiance, by my dearest Anna, who supports all that stuff. She's a. I'm very I'm super duper thankful that she is the way that she is. Love you, dear. But like going going back to it, this is I I consider another reason. Actually, another reason that I um started streaming to begin with was because I kind of had a void in my heart that I wanted to fill, and the void was left there by the current lack of theater work that I do. And when I started streaming. I felt almost as if like that, that part of me was being satisfied. I haven't felt that void. I, I have not felt that void of perform. Like I need to perform. I need to be entertaining people because I want people to feel good. And while me also feeling good at the same time, like that void has not been there for the past few months since I started streaming. And it's really, really cool. Also too, I'm, I'm the kind of person who if I need to think about something, I will talk to myself. I will. There are even some things, it doesn't matter who's around, like, if people are around, I will not talk about it. I, I just, or didn't, I, there are things that, it's not because I feel uncomfortable or anything. It's just that there's just not something that I feel like needs to be brought up. So I, I don't bring it up. And I'm talking to myself probably like in my head, the, the silent talk, the silent uh, thinking, the silent thinker. Um... But so, this almost feel like, like in moments, in moments like this, where it's the, ho the host me plus camera and a chill game like Minecraft, like this, and not necessarily the narration games, like, you know, Chrono Trigger, Hades, they got a lot of, 
got a lot of stuff going on, which is great, and I love those games so much, but they don't really give me the opportunity to feel like feel like I'm getting getting personal. Getting personal, not not just with myself. I don't think I need myself to be any more personal. I'm as, I'm as personal to myself as I'm ever going to get. But I, I don't know. It's just a nice chance to be able to reflect on things. Re reflect on things, chat about things, potentially make a difference for those who are like, uh, I mean, one of the main reasons I got this whole, uh, if you hadn't noticed, there's the, the stream's title was Good Morning Times and Good Vibes, and that is because there is still 15 minutes left of morning over here in the Eastern Standard Time, and I don't know. I like to use this as an opportunity to just kind of just chat about things, chat about positivity, and that doesn't need to happen just during these things. I welcome conversation anytime. I've always been the kind of person, and I was reflecting on this recently too. I reflect on a lot. I think a lot. I am an overthinker. I definitely am an overthinker. But so a couple of a couple of classmates of mine reached out and were like, "Hey, are you around right now? Because we're all graduating." And they were like, "Are you all around? You want to go like, grab like lunch or something, or maybe go out for a couple of drinks?" And I was like, "Yeah, totally, dude. I go out anytime." But you know what it is? I am not the initiator. I don't think I'm ever the person who calls somebody up out of the blue and says, yo, we should totally hang out. Except except in a couple cases. Like, there are few, few and far between. But on the default, I am not the person who you would expect to call from randomly. Hey, you know what? Um, I'm not doing anything. You want to hang out? Now, some some circumstances are a little bit different. For example, for example, um, you've told me multiple, multiple times, hey, if you're in the area, call me up. You can stop by. I will, I will call you if I stop by because... Otherwise, it, I feel like it'd be rude. It'd be rude not to call if you told me to call when you're in the area and I'm in the area and I didn't tell you. But for something like, oh, you live down the street, like, I'm probably not gonna call you up randomly and be like, hey, we should totally hang out. Because, like, I don't know. I'd like to say the reason is that I am not an initiator. But sometimes I am. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a continuer. Not necessarily an initiator. I will not necessarily initiate the conversation, but if someone were to begin a conversation with me, then I will. We'll, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep talking. We'll just keep talking until one of us is eventually done talking. And I'm really, I, I, I like that about me. But again, I think that I have room for improvement. I think that at some point, I would like to get to a point where I'm the person reaching out, saying, "Yo, we should totally." We should totally hang out right now. Or we have, hey, been a while. How are you? Because I just, I don't do that right now. But I want to. I don't currently do that. I, I, I mean, I do it a little bit more than I did previously. But don't get me wrong. If anybody ever did, and people have, like the other day, I, I had mentioned that some of my colleagues reach out and like, hey, you want to go get some drinks or something? You want to hang out for a little bit? I'm like, yeah, totally. Yeah, let's do that. And I think it's because we're all graduating. So there's this, this, this idea that we may not see each other for a long while and just a quick catch up before we all move on to the next chapter of our lives which is totally appropriate just it i almost feel bad that i didn't think about it i it wasn't me who thought oh you know what i'm not gonna see these people for a while so i should probably reach out to them i almost i like felt bad about it that i wasn't the one who initiated but then again i am not the initiator so why should i feel bad about it well because i want to be an initiator sometimes anyway long story short i'm working on it but that's the kind of person I want to become, and I'm hope hopefully, in a year or two, maybe, uh, with everything, every I, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll be able to do that. That could be pretty cool. That could be pretty pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. To be able to have that opportunity. But either way, I'm going out for drinks on Wednesday, and I'm going out for lunch on Tuesday. So I'm very very happy with that. And of course, like don't get me wrong, like, I I it's not like I never leave my house. I. I rarely leave my apartment, though. I'm usually hanging in my comfy little corner over here, doing whatever it is that I do, because I like my corner. But, like, I go out with my fiancé all the time. And we're always going out to eat. Uh, mostly because neither of us want to cook, and if neither of us want to cook, then, pff, well, nobody... We're not going to cook, that. We're just going to go out. That's what we have money for, so we can go out to eat when we don't feel like cooking. I mean, don't not feeling like cooking, I think, is a wonderful enough reason to go out now don't get me wrong just because you don't feel like cooking doesn't mean that you should be going to like 
the Chez Restaurante Vetri on, you know, five-star dining experience with $100 for a plate of pizza. Um, but like, uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey D's every once in a while is no problem. A little bit of Chick-fil-A. We went, we got Chick-fil-A on the way home from, on the way back here to Philly from my parents' house. And uh, that was a wise decision. I feel like Chick-fil-A is always a wise decision. Oh, I love Chick-fil-A so much. Oh, I love Chick-fil-A. I mostly love the Chick-fil-A sauce. The sauce gets me. Oh my God. Oh, the sauce. I love that sauce so much. Honestly, I think I eat Chick-fil-A for the sauce. I don't think there's anything else I love more about Chick-fil-A than the sauce. Superb natural viewers, Jar Nick. I'm not exactly sure what that is, my friend, but I welcome you nonetheless. I welcome you nonetheless to this journey we're having underground in the mines. In the mines, in the mines, in the mines, mines, in the mines, in the mines, in the mine, mines. Let me, let me check that for a moment, though. Let me do a check, quick check on that. What is it? What is it? Do, 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 do. Destination is dogehype.com. I don't know about that. Let's, uh, I don't like that. Can I, like, remove, remove? How do I do that? I don't really like that. The click is, the click is scary. Click is scary. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Meatball, I need your guidance. I don't know how to delete a chat message. Delete, no. Remove, no. How do I... I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna look at my commands. I don't know what my commands are. I've never been in a spell like this. I don't I don't really know. I don't know how to do that. I don't I don't know. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know. You caught me, you caught me. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. You know what? I've got a I've got an idea. I'm gonna take a quick break from my lunch. And then I'm gonna figure this out. So uh I'm gonna take my lunch. Be back in a minute, everybody. And welcome back, everybody. I ate my sandwich and I went to the bathroom. In case you were curious, I'm happy to fill in the blanks. My sandwich this time, we were out of bread. So it was uh, one of those romaine sandwiches. A little ham, a little cheese, no bread, just lettuce. Let us entertain with a lettuce sandwich. That's uh, that's what we got here. And also too, I was I was further reflecting and overthinking as I usually do while I was gone and realized I don't think I actually took the moment to just to make a like a personal thank you to just everybody in general. So uh this is this is my personal thank you because I realize you know what? I realize I haven't I haven't been too thankful. I don't I don't think I'm super duper thank or I haven't made it obvious that I'm like super duper thankful but I feel really happy about it so like to everybody just hanging around whoever you may be whatever you're doing if you've at least gotten to this point if you're here right now and by right now I don't mean live I mean right now as in like literally this very moment wherever you are thank you you're appreciated at least by me because you're just here at the very least, and uh, although there's not much else I can do from there, uh, just thank you. You're awesome. We'll continue from there. Because uh, I, I don't know, every once in a while I see like, you know, you scroll on past different posts, and unless you're actively looking for it, you may you might come across like a little thing that says like, Hey, by the way, in case you were wondering, you were appreciated. And those run uh, those random things. Every once in a while, I'll walk around the streets and um, I'll find like a sticker that's been slapped into a pole somewhere that says, "Hey, by the way, uh, just so you know, it's gonna be okay." And I really appreciate those. I really, really appreciate those stickers that I find laying about. I'm sure some people will be like, well, "That's just a waste. Why would you stick stickers everywhere? It's just like gonna kill the earth or whatever because littering and stuff like that." I'm like, "Okay, well, you're a pessimist, and that's fine. You can be a pessimist." 
But there's also a bright side of it too, because I bet there are hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands of people who walk by that sticker and don't read it. But there's another significant portion of people who walk by, they do read it, they think about it, and they and they feel good by it. And so uh, I actually did something similar. There's a little there's a little note card up in the hallway that says Psst. And it's got a little it's got a little thing that says like, you know, open this up. And if you open up the note card, it says, You got so, uh, the post-it card's out, out, outside my door. Shh, don't tell my neighbors. But, um, here's your postcard. Psst. Psst, get what? Guess what? You got this. I think you got this. I'm not sure how. I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you, what there is to be gotten for you. However, I'm sure you got it. Eventually. And if you don't, that's okay. You got something else. You can, it's okay to it's okay to fail at things. You can just learn from it. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm curious to know about it. I'm curious to know if I can if I can help in any way, shape, or form. I'd be happy to hear about it. I'm not sure what I can do from way over here, but um, I, I like to think I like to think there might be something, something. It's so insignificant. But in the meantime, I'll just keep on doing what I do, and uh, hopefully that helps in some way, shape, or form. And I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, scary music. Gotta remove that from this playlist. It got spooky! I don't need some spooky dukes. Spooky dukes on the Minecraft? Nah. We're just chillin'. Just chillin', bruh. Chillin' like a villain. Tr chillin' like a straight-up villain, my goodness. I'm so evil how much chilling I've got! So much chill. So much chill. So much evil. Like an absolute villain. I wonder, chilling like a villain? Is it really villainous to be chilling so much? To be chilling as hard as we are? Just be chilling and playing some Minecraft? I don't think there's anything too evil about it. But then again, what is the line between evil and good? What is the line that we draw between good, bad, lawful, chaotic, good, evil? In the whole D and D alignment chart, where is that line drawn? Is there really a line? Can we walk the line between good and evil? Can we walk walk the line between law and order? I think we can. Life is a gray area. I think so. We are all multifaceted, multifaceted people, multifaceted people who do multifaceted things. We all got many sides, many sides to our personalities, many sides. In any case, well, how much, uh, I got quite a bit of cobble here. I need another digger's backpack. I'm gonna go back and get another digger's backpack. Because, uh, I am one who digs. And I need more space for all this cobblestone I've got. Because that's the reason I keep on going back. Not because I'm running out of power or anything, but because I'm running out of space in my backpacks. That's always a problem. That and the fact, I mean, these backpacks are really, really great, but they're also the source of the crashing all the time. Because what keeps on happening is if you, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how it is, but if you open up the backpack and also scroll at the same time, like I scroll to access different things on my hotbar. If you open up the backpack and scroll at the same time, I'm guessing like the scroll bar just disappears for a moment. But when you try to scroll... Minecraft crashes because of an indexed out of bounds ex uh, exception, which basically means like, imagine this way. If I told you that there are 10 books on the shelf and I tell you to grab me book number 11, you'd be like, like the, if you were the computer, you'd be like, uh, dude, there is no number 11. Therefore, I can't get you the book. Therefore, I'm going to, I'm going to crash because you didn't give me the right instruction. Poo poo for you, programmer. Or same thing. Like if I told you there's 10 books, they're numbered. 1 through 10, and I tell you to grab book number 0, but there is no, there is none numbered 0, then, like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get it. You're not, you'd be like, you'd be like, what the hell? There is no number 0. What are you talking about? Though, arguably, if you're programming and you're not card and counting from 0, you're probably MATLAB, or you just, you just want to be different. It's okay to be different. You're totally fine to be different. Just, like, you confuse me. But I'll get used to it. I respect that. 
Oh, what am I doing? Ah, I'm depositing things. And making sure that the power struggles aren't too crazy. Put all my stuff in the backpack, doo doo. I got a lot of stuff for processing later. Lots of ski light. I, I do want to check while I'm here. Ski light has manganese, molybdenum, and calcium. So, ski light is a really good source for molybdenum as well as manganese. Do I have any manganese? I gotta think. Do I have any source of manganese right now? Mang. Mang. I do have plenty of manganese. I have no idea what manganese is used for. I'm sure I'll figure that out eventually. I mean, you know, I'll take a look. Let's see what manganese is used for. But it's a significant source of manganese, as well as molybdenum. Molybdenum is pretty hard to come by because I think the only other ores that give molybdenum are molybdenum itself uh, and wolfenite, I think, and powellite, I think, as well. And I have only found one, sort, one ore vein of that, and it was very, very close to the bottom of the ocean. So I mined all that out, and now it's flooded, and I can't get more. And then there's also calcium. That's, calcium is good for some other things. But what is manganese used for? Manganese can be used for stainless steel. Oh, that's that's good. HSSE. Manganese ingot. It's good. And um, yeah, stainless steel. More stainless steel. More stainless steel. Greater metal catalyst. Cool. Greater metal catalyst. And stellite. Oh, cool. And that uses, it looks like cobalt, manganese, chrome, and titanium. Stellite. Stellite? What's stellite used for? I'm sure it gets blast furnished in a very hot stellite. Stellite. Stellite rod. Can make stellite frame boxes. And they're used for matter generation coils. Sweet! If any of y'all are familiar with, like, modded Minecraft, like, industrial craft or build craft and stuff like that, there's a mass, something called a mass fabricator, where essentially you break things down into the just rare atoms and quarks and stuff like that, and you can rebuild them into anything else. Imagine Full Metal Alchemist and alchemy and stuff like that. But uh, there's an equivalent to that in this one, but it takes a lot of a lot of energy. Specifically, it needs quantum plate, which needs gallium is hard to come by, americium, which is super hard to come by, uh, palladium, super hard to come by, uh, bismuth is not that bad, chromium, manganese, tin, that's fine. Um, actually, quantum is quantum. How do you make quantum ingots? Do you need steel light for that? Because it looks like you need steel light for that. I need quantum dust to make quantum dust. How does make one make quantum dust? To make quantum dust, uh, the hot quantum ingot, we can build, mess things up. I think I have to look at the hot quantum ingot. Um, quantum dust, is there any other way? Get the quantum dust, but how do you make the quantum dust? I want to know how to make quantum dust. But I do not know how to make quantum dust. Interesting. I'm having a hard time figuring out where to get quantum dust. Quantum ingot, does that get made on its own? Maybe in a blast furnace? Blast furnace, no. Uh, it can come from a liquid. How do we get molten quantum? Is this how to do it? Alloy blast smelter, there it is. Okay, so you used it in the alloy blast smelter, which requires steelite, gallium, bismuth, palladium, and americium. So manganese will become important very much later on when we get to some higher tier materials. Now, how do we extract that manganese? So I can get manganese, molybdenum, and calcium if I put it through the sag mill, as well as some skillite, which has tungsten in it, calcium, uh, and oxygen. So that could be really, really useful for getting tungsten as well, uh, tungsten dust specifically. But what other ways to process? You can get skillite ore, you get some manganese, process that. If you put it into the thermal centrifuge, you get some molybdenum, put it through that again, you get calcium. Not really interested in that. Let's try it again. What other path is right for you? Crust ski light. Do it the regular way. Get it all washed, purified, some manganese, ski light, come out the other side, wash that up a bit. We get molybdenum. That's cool. But I can also get an entire entire molybdenum dust the other way. And this purified pile also gives molybdenum. So ski light is mostly for molybdenum. But then ski light dust comes out the other side. And we get ski light dust which can be turned into tungsten if electrolyzed, probably. Electrolyzed, we can get tungsten dust, and tungsten is very, very important. So I think ski light, uh, the sagna looks good, good and promising, but I don't need calcium ore. I don't need molybdenum ore. Um, not like that, at least. I'd rather get pieces and bits of molybdenum all the way through. So this does not need to be, I do not need to configure the system for this. Appetite, I think, is already configured 
for this system. Let me see. Is appetite going here somewhere? App app appetite. Appetite just kind of gets churned up. Appetite itself wants to be turned into appetite dust. So there's no need to do anything with that. Phosphorus. I think I want phosphorus dust now. So I don't want... I want this to go the regular process. Regular process. Phosphorus doesn't get modified at all. Now that I realize that I can make um, fertilizer from it. Now that I know that, that's good. Phosphorus, do you get over here, sifting machine? I hope you don't. Let's take a look-see. Do do do. Are you configured for? Okay, please. There we go. Are you for phosphorus? You are not. Perfect. I don't want you to be. What else have we got? And of course, tungsten. Tungsten ore. Got some tungsten. Yeah, buddy. And lithium as well. What else do we get for lithium ores? Um, it appears to only make lithium. So if you crush up lithium, you do stuff with lithium, you get lithium. Who knew? Lithium, 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 lithium. So that's fine. You can go the regular way. Um, although some of these, some of these are a little different. So let me check here and the thermal centrifuge as well to see if you can get more from it. You can, but it's not worth the extra energy. Um, appetite, already checked that. Yellow right's fine. Tongue state. We got some tongue state. Tongue state. Silver, manganese, and lithium. I think I just want tongue state for tongue state. I can get a uh, lithium from it. If it gets, that creates silver if it's thermal centrifuged. If I do it this way, I get manganese. A little bit of silver would be nice. Centrifuge it. We can get lithium. And still tongue stay down on the other side. So, what if I do it the normal way? Normal way. Normal way, a normal way. Get that. If I swirl it, I swirl it up. I can get more silver dust on the other side. If it's been centrifuged. Uh, like this, we can get silver dust, 10% chance. And if we do that, we also get silver. So actually, sending tongue the rest of the way like the normal way is also less profitable and then when tungsten comes out the other side you probably electrolyze it into tungsten and la 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 lithium but it needs to be electrolyzed with nitrogen hydrogen oh it's a good thing i have a bunch of hydrogen then too in an electrolyzer what else can hydrogen be used for in an electrolyzer i'm curious oh whoops i messed that up uh tungsten tungsten to Crush tongue state to that, get turned into that, then you go into the electrolyzer, then you do hydrogen gas in the electrolyzer. Regular electrolyzer. Electrolyzer? Fly at my desk. Got him! Got that fly. Um, the electrolyzer only uses hydrogen for two recipes, and it's for tongue state, and it's for ski lights. So in order to get tungsten, I need hydrogen. And then the tungsten itself can be mixed... Can that be smelted into a dust? It can be turned into a greater metal catalyst, which I wasn't able to make before, but now that I have tungsten... Oh, baby! As well as tantaloy with tantalum. I have plenty of tantalum. Don't know if I need tantaloy for anything. But I'll have to do my research. Packager, we packaged on up. We turned it off tungsten ingot. It can be turned into Xeron 100! Or... Hastaloy C276! <laughs> or that tantaloy. Excuse my hiccups, please. I don't mean it. I don't mean it. I don't mean to hiccup all over the place. That's nasty. And it seems my air is turned back on. It has been getting incredibly hot around here, so we make sure to keep things all nice and cool because, I mean, you may, may not have noticed it, but I'm in, my, I'm in my short sleeves as I usually am, and I got shorts on. And I don't have shoes on. Because it's too hot. I had my slippers on for a little bit, but I realized, oh, no. I forget what the greater metal catalyst can be used for. Dangerous to create the infused D.O.B. egg. One of the goals is to get all of these catalysts. And I have a few of them already. But not right now. So we got all this stuff. Got some gold. Got some nice dust. Copper. Ruby dust. All that stuff. But I shan't send it to the system right now. Uh, because we don't have enough energy for it. I do not have enough energy for all this right now. So instead I'll just kind of throw the cobblestone in. Cobble, 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 and marble. That'll get sent up, packaged away, sent to the storage system. Hello, seaweed. Hello there, seaweed. 
And yeah, that's pretty good. This should give me, actually, there's not a lot of phosphorus there. To be honest, just a lot of appetite. I need more phosphorus, so I'm going back for more phosphorus. It seems that most of this day has been spent kind of uh, farming, and, farming and mining around. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Sometimes I need days like this. And in the meantime, while I've been gone, this has been uh, creating more power, right? This is, you've been going up? Yep, we're already back to 45 stack. It was up to about 130 the other day before I left it for like 19 hours. And then, well, um, are you still, you guys still going? I've still got about an hour and something left over here. So what I will do is I will fill you back up with more charcoal, which has been produced. Um, this is a nice thing too, like with those dimensional, um, um, with those dimensional anchors over there, I now have a way to fuel as if a player was always there, even when I'm not on. Like previously with the other anchors, um, it only used ender pearls, and I would need to have a steady supply of ender pearls in order for it to be it to seem as if a player was there all the time. Now I can use charcoal, meaning that I can just anytime I get charcoal, anytime we create charcoal, I got a little path that goes over to the dimensional uh, anchors that. That will just it'll just refill it up if it's empty if it's empty it'll it'll have that so that, that's pretty cool so these can always be on when i'm not on one of the biggest problems that i have in this particular uh power setup is that i will eventually if i give the system a big enough job it will run out of power eventually so the goal is to be able to have as huge a buffer as charcoal as possible as huge a buffer of charcoal as possible currently i would have to leave my game on and just leave it on for hours and hours at a time and i don't really feel like doing that because my my computer over here has a like bright led lights that kind of shine under the door and it doesn't really bother me but it bothers anna a little bit so i want to make sure i don't compete my computer on all night also the fans go and that's a little bit of noise and any little bit of noise might be disturbing i don't want to disturb anybody so i don't usually keep it on overnight but sometimes i have it on in the background but you know Minecraft can be a little heavy on the computer sometimes and if I'm doing like schoolwork and stuff Which won't really be a problem going forward But if I'm working on stuff that needs that computer res those computer resources then I really can't have Minecraft in the background what this will do is it will allow me to Excuse me pipe that charcoal over to the dimensional anchors And then I'll have a little control system in there being like oh if I don't want them to be constantly functioning I turn that off, but uh, I might as well just do that now actually because it's freshly on my brain I do want to get more phosphorus though, so I shan't forget about that. But this is this is hot on my brain right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this. So I'm gonna get me some. Let's get some pipes. Let's get some pipes. I need pipe. I need to lay some pipe. Let's do some cobblestone pipe. We got plenty of those. I need a little bit of a rare iron transport pipe. I'll need some pipe plugs. I will need a couple of gates few of those uh, i don't need my gate copier uh, i want my ranch my ranch i need my ranch it's pipe time baby pipe time and i need to reroute some pipes uh yeah that should be good that should be everything i need to lay some pipe down so to speak we're laying some pipes so to speak also i should probably restock up on torches now while i remember that i need torches or else i am not going to forget i'm not going to remember wow look at that need some more torches it's a good thing i have a shit ton of charcoal that's good. Also, to check on things, too. In order to create charcoal, we need fertilizer. In order to make fertilizer, I need that fertilizer thing that I was working on before. How much fertilizer do we have over here? Let's take a check. Whoops. Open door. Plenty of dirt in there. And we've got 17 stacks of fertilizer. So, on the bright side, even though I really didn't want to have that much fertilizer being made over those 19 hours of me not paying attention, I'm kind of glad it did. Because uh, now I have all this fertilizer and I don't need to worry about that for at least a couple more days. So now, let's redirect this charcoal. Instead of going into here first, to the buffer, instead what I wanted to do is I wanted to go all the way around to here. Whoops. In here. Uh, let's let's remove these. Uh, here, let's remove these player sensors right now so I don't have to keep messing with them. Player sensor. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh. Now the door won't close. Door won't close? Door won't close. Perfect. Oh, there's another one. Nope, no it didn't. Yes, now the doors won't close. Okay. 
I want them to go all the way around this way. Check, hey, does this thing need more charcoal? If so, put charcoal in it. Now, there may come a point, for example, that I'm not exactly sure. So, a single piece of charcoal, I think, gives me four minutes. So, if I'm not producing at least one charcoal every four minutes, this system is not sustainable. In which case, I need more coke ovens, which I'm actually already working on that. I'm trying to make more coke ovens and expand the system. There are 12 coke ovens currently, but I could use more. I could always use more because we need more charcoal. More charcoal! I need to burn more things! So that's an idea. But so, currently, charcoal comes in this direction. I'd rather it go a different direction. So charcoal goes all the way this way. It could go the other way. So let's work on that for a moment, right? Let, let's think about that. If I put the pipe in over here, maybe have it go in through this wall, through the back, right? I like that idea. Let's, let's think about that for a moment. I will go around. I will route it through the walls. I will have my little systems here and here. I'll route it up above. Like so. Like so. So it'll come around the back. It'll check. I don't think I need any more dimensional uh, anchors. However, I might add a third one over in uh, the further chunk that way. to Because this keeps not the lab uh, loaded. It keeps only the, the buffer over here loaded. And if I ever wanted ore generation or processing to happen while I'm offline, well, I would do it that way as well. Um, but that'll be fine. So let's see about this. Put that here, put that there. I need an iron transport pipe here and an iron transport pipe here, as well as cobblestone coming in through here. So I think it's best to come this way. It'll come over here. And then as you come through, if that is accepting charcoal at that very moment, um, yes. So maybe I actually should come up the other way. Coming through the other way. So it'll come with this way. If it is accepting charcoal, it'll go that way. If it's not, it will continue on to the next anchor, which will then check the same thing. Like, do you need charcoal? No, you do not. Okay, that's fine. Let's see if I have um, proper controls for that, because oftentimes I don't. So let's see. Currently, are there any items in this inventory? Yes, there are. Is there space for items? So let's see, space for items, space in inventory. It says that there isn't. Does it say there's space for inventory now? Yes, it says there's space in inventory. What about, what about other things? Redstone signal needs fuel? No, it's not going to work. Inventory full? It says the inventory is full. So actually, that'll work. That'll work. Space in inventory? No. If there is space in inventory, I want you to go downwards. Same thing over here. If there is space in the inventory, I, not items, space. If there is space... I want you to go downwards. Because if I remove all of the charcoal here, it says that there is space in the inventory. Perfect. That means there will only there will always ever be. Oh, but that doesn't really work. See, the problem with that is I don't want to let it get to a point where there is only one at a time. So I think I'm gonna need some hoppers for this. I'm going to need some hoppers. Instead of these gates reading the status of the dimensional anchor itself, instead, it'll read the status of the hopper. If the hopper is not full, it will add more charcoal to it. So let me go, let me go grab some hoppers. Because if the hopper is full, that means the dimensional anchor is full. If it works with hoppers, I hope it does. Uh, la 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 la, hopper. La 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 la, la hopper. La 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 the hopper. I need you for a moment. My hopper little bot. I need some hoppers in my life. Does it work? Let's see. Uh, let's get these pipes out of here. I don't need these pipes right now. Gotta experiment with the hoppers. With the hoppers, my friends. Okay, so hopper there. 
if I were to place a piece of charcoal into here, what do we get? Does it go inside? Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Seems to be running a little... That's cool. Let me just make sure. I'm going to double check. Does that go up to 52? It went up to 52. Wonderful, then. So that does work. So if that's the case, instead, I will have the iron pipe here. I'll have a pipe plug here because it shouldn't be going that way. It should not be going that way. Uh, although I'd rather have... Oh, you know what? Instead of the pipe plug, let's put a gate there instead. Because the gates also act like pipe plugs. If there is items in the inventory, if there is space in the, if if there is space in the inventory, I want you to fill it up. Yeah, if there's space in the inventory, fill it on up. Same thing over here. If this hopper is not full, space in the inventory, I want you to put charcoal into it, which is in the down direction. And then I'll put another control gate on the side that says. Uh, this is the wrong way around. Whoops, I wanted to do it over here. Yeah, yeah. Items come in that way. Items go out this way. And then, if this is... I need another... I need another gate. I need another gate. I need another gate. I need another gate. So I need access to the other side. So let me just, for a moment, come over here and gain access to the other side. The other side of the pipe and network. That direction is east. East? Don't you sit east? If the inventory is full, go east. So uh, just for argument's sake, I know there are some things that can't go into there. So if it's full, it goes that way. Perfect. Test successful. But what about over here? I'm gonna come around from the back, make a little thing over here. Do a little stuff in the back. I need more space. There we go. There we, there we go. There we, there we go. Same thing over here. If uh, that is east and then west. If the inventory is full, I want you to go west. Let's test it. It's full. Oh, no. It's going west to go on to the next one. So you fill up this one first, and then you fill up the next one. Now, I don't want that to be the case, but that's all right. Because I need this filled up first. I don't want... For example, if this guy runs out, then it's not going to be... To, going to be a, if either of these run out at the same time, the chunks will unload. If the chunks unload, then other things... Like if, it, if it unloads, then it won't be able to determine... Like, like if the game isn't running, it can't ask itself, oh, do I have any more fuel left to continue loading the game? So they have to be running all the time or else they'll shut off. I think. Now, I might actually be incorrect about that. I don't exactly know how these dimensional anchors work because, for instance, I was saying last time that the fertilizer system went went crazy. This... The fertilizer system is not in that loaded chunk. It's not in the same chunk area. It's over here. So I don't even know how it was running. Or was it? Is it right on the edge? It might actually be right on the edge. I'm gonna see if it's on the edge. The edge, the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge. I'm on the edge. Oh my god, you are on the edge. Ah, that's why things were going crazy. Well, now that I know that, that's why that was running. And those red little red wires don't function well across unloaded chunk barriers, so it was always off because it had no on switch. That's why it kept on going. Aha, uh -huh. I have figured out the puzzle. Watson, my dear. We've done it. We figured it out. Well, now that I know, the only way I would have known is to give it a shot. Now it says, oh, that's currently got dirt in it. Oh my god, whoops. I want the charcoal in there. Whoopsie. That ran out. Didn't need to do that. I don't need to add stuff in there anymore. Ha! That's funny. Okay. Then it goes in there, and it goes in there. So now I need to take this little thing here, and I need to route it the other way. So let's use the laser. So bring it down to a level where that's right. Let me see what coordinates I need to be at. I am moving in the Z direction. I want to be at Z495. Negative 495. Once I get to Z negative 495, I will be in the right location. <laughs> Excuse me. Z negative 495. Oh, hello there. Oh, it's my other cavern area. Yay. Getting dark. I should have some torches. 
Torch, 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 torch. Need some torch. Hey, look. Coal. Take some of that coal. I'll take that coal. Thank you. Thank you for the coal. Four, nine, five. A little bit, little bit farther. Little bit farther. A little bit farther. Little bit farther. I've done it. Okay, now I'm gonna go this way and break through the nether brick. And I don't want to completely destroy it. So uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna break it with my pickaxe because I really don't want to potentially use nether brick. Nether brick isn't necessarily in short supply, but it's not a super prevalent resource because of the way things are set up right now. I am down here. That's okay. Welcome to down here. We're happy to be down here. I'm happy to be down here. So long as I'm in the company of others, I think I'll be okay. Cobblestone, 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 cobblestone pipe, that is. You'll come out of here. Perfect. And you are prepped and ready for when I want to deal with you later. Now, in the meantime, I'll go around the edge because I now want charcoal to come in not this way actually charcoal can actually be combined with this stuff over here because sometimes charcoal is made in the ore processing system when it is it gets piped into here and then it gets sent to the system directly so i just need to connect this up here it's a little iron transport pipe right about here perfect um not like that though not like that but just over here. So now, and it always goes this way. So if charcoal isn't needed by these anchors over here, it'll just go back in the system and go right back to, to the buffer. Perfect. Now I just need to switch the directions of everything. So I want all of the pipes to connect this way. So uh, let's put a little iron transport pipe here. Boop. Cobblestone this way. Switch the direction this way. If any charcoal comes in, it is going to go this way first. Um, that's fine. I don't like that. I'd rather do this. There we go. That looks better to me. That just looks prettier to me. And I like pretty things. Actually, let's put it there instead. That way I don't have to worry about... Blah. I'll just put more nether brick in the walls. Yeah. So now charcoal is made here. It will go that way. If charcoal is made, I want it to also go this way, not that way. Uh, this way, not that way. Uh, this way, not that way. So now, everything else can go this way. But instead of being pushed over here, you're going to go this way instead. So some charcoal makes it to the anchors faster than the others. That's okay. This little pipe plug is bothering me, so I'm going to remove it. I don't need it. Now, if any charcoal in lane one comes by, it'll come down this way and go this way and be sent to lane three. If any charcoal in lane two comes down, it'll be sent to lane one this way. If anything goes into lane one, it will go all the way to the anchors. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. So perfect. Uh, let me see what's in my... Let me turn off my miner's back. That, that's, that's it. That's all I needed to do. Now, whenever charcoal is made, it will look at the dimensional anchors first. Um, and then go to the buffer. And make its way to le bouffe. Le bouffe. Le bouffe, le bouffe, le bouffe. I also need to add an override switch over here. So I will do that in a hot moment. I would need... I need red wire for that. And I currently don't have red wire for that. So I'm going to go grab red wire. I go grab myself some red wire. And I'll be back. Be back in a moment. I don't need no pipes anymore, really. I might need structural pipes, though, just because of the way that red wires work. So, red. Red is the color of my soul. Red pipe wire. And, ooh, what else, what else, what else? Um, I might need the structural pipes. Struck. I've been cobble struck. Down, 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 down here on new cobble struck. As in struck in the head by cobblestone. Ow. Oh, and I need a lever. Can't forget the lever. Lever? Lever. <laughs> lever. <laughs> I hardly know her. Tee hee. Let's go downstairs and let's fix that. Go downstairs and let's fix it. Do. 
Okay, I want a lever on the wall. Uh, how about, how about here? Convenient lever. It is off. Let's add another gate here that says, if that lever is on, if I'm receiving a redstone signal, uh, I need to put wire up here. If I'm receiving a redstone signal, turn the wire on. Oh, are you not receiving that redstone signal? What is it? Oh, silly me. That should be right here on the wall. That's gotta be... Whoop! I gotta put the lever over here. There we go. Now that works. Oh, but you know what? I don't like that either. Um, instead, because if the redstone signal hits the hopper, then it's gonna control that too, and that's not exactly how I want it to be. So I'll just throw it right here. There we go. That's perfect. If it is on like that, I need another... Uh, I need another red gate that says... For this, just just like this, if it's full, or rather, yeah, if there's space, go down. Instead, if it's inventory full, go west. Instead, if it's the red signal is on, also go west. There we go. Up and around, up and around. Gotta connect that to the thing. Boop. There we go. I'm gonna suit this ceiling so I can get up there and... Make another thing. If that is on, if the red signal is on, you will also go to the east. Right? You said to the east. You said to the east. You will also say to the east. We all say to the east. Weast say to the weast. And then same thing. If it's on, if the red pipe signal is on, what do you got to do? Go to the west. Right? Go to the west. Go to the west. So the red pipe signal is on. Why are you not going to the west? Oh, you know what? That's not working. Okay, so... That's not gonna work. I'm gonna need better gates. I need better, better gates in order to do that. So... Yeah, that's not fun. Okay. I need an iron gate as opposed to these basic gates. These basic gates ain't gonna cut it. I need something like these... Except not that. I need something like that. The iron and gate. So, uh, yes. So what I'll do is I'm going to replace this gate with space in inventory. Instead, there has to be space in the inventory and the red signal has to be off. If both of those conditions are met, then you go down. Else, elsewise, you know, you're not going to do anything. So I need to take that off. Take that off the top. Sometimes logic gets a little, uh, gets a little, gets a little complicated. There we go. Okay. I need the iron gate. And how do I make the iron and gate? Let's go search for it. Iron and. Iron and. And, 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 and. Iron and. I just take a regular gate. Uh, a regular, uh. Is that iron and gate? Pulsating? I'm confused. What do you want me to do? I can make the basic red gate like that. I need two iron... I, I need iron ingots. So I need the iron chip set, chip set and uh, that. So let's make some iron chip sets. I just need two of them. But might as well make a few. Forming press of uh, redstone chip sets and iron plates. That makes total sense to me. How to make more redstone or red chip sets. I need redstone plates. Carved up in the laser engraver. So all my signals are in the right place. I can put all my pipe stuff away. Put all my pipe stuff. Put all of my peep stuff. All of my peep stuff go away. So uh, I don't need you anymore. I don't. I don't need these guys. I don't need them anymore. All I need is a little bit of. All I need is a little bit of and. A little bit of and gate. Perfection. Okay. I need iron for the iron plates. I need redstone for the redstone plates. I also have chip sets already. Perfect. I certainly don't need thirty-two of these. Let's just go with 16. Might as well have an excess as opposed to anything else. I'd rather have more than less. Let's get these things uh, get these things uh, flattened. Make some plates. It's industry time now at Draconia Lab where we've got the team working on complex logic. It's not really complex logic. 
It could be, or you know what? It is complex logic, but it could be more complex. It could be a whole hell of a lot worse if we want it to be. And it doesn't have to be. But if we want it to be more crazy, crazy, it could be more crazy, crazy. Basic chemical reactor. I need these to be in forming press. So the forming press will go over here. I will wait for those iron plates and they will do their thing. I also need uh, molten redstone, I think, right? For the iron and gate. Put it over here. Assemble it. Program one. Molten red alloy. Molten red alloy. I need 100, a whole, I think it, blech, I need an ingot of molten red alloy for all of these. So I need an ingot of that. So let's make some molten, I made some red alloy. Red alloy. Ayya. Ah, space, alloy. I don't have any red alloy. So let's make some red alloy. Redstone. Give me the redstone. And I also require a bit of copper right now because copper is what we use for the, Damn it, I clicked the wrong button. No! Whoa, favorite potions. What button did I click? I discover new things every day. What was that I'm thinking of? Copper. Copper, copper, copper. Copper, copper, copper. Need some more copper. Copper, copper, copper. You want copper? Stick around for more copper after the break. And get some red alloy, right? That's red alloy? That is red alloy to me. And I need 16 of those for my 16 plates to make 16 gates. Not that I need all those gates, but I'm but I'm gonna make it anyway. Anyway, better to have more than less. I apparently also need to eat some PB and J, so I will do that on my way over to the forming press. If my 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 work, I need a new mouse. Oh my god, I need a new mouse. Specifically, it's weird. Like specifically, I need a new mouse for Minecraft because this game is the one that uses the right click the most, and currently, right click is the one that is most unreliable. And I don't like that. Oh, and you know what else I need? I need... I need a programmed one circuit, which I can grab from the basic bender over here. Programmed circuit one. Number one. That's what it needs to be. While you're forming your pressing. You forming your press? Are you forming the press? Forming the press over here? Yeah, you forming some press. Forming some press? Can I scan? Nope. There is nothing to be learned from these weird objects. Nothing from that either. Sad boy time. Anything to learn from circuits? Nope. Nothing at all. Player sensor? Yes! I like to learn new things. I always love learning new things. If I can. If I can learn new things, and then I will. And we'll wait for that to do that over here. I only need... Actually, you know what? Nah, let's, let's just do this. Uh Oh, I need this in the assembler. So let's do this. Mm. Mm. I don't need program six. I have redstone in there for some reason. That's cool. Um, I don't need that. Let's put that over here. And then, um, oh, where's my redstone alloy? It's behind me. Aha! Or not redstone alloy, red alloy. They are two distinct things. It gets confusing. And I have all my chipsets. Throw my chipsets in there. Throw my red alloy into the extractor. Let's make some gates. It takes a little while to make some gates, but that's fine. Making gates is what we're here for. That's what I want to do. I only need two of them. So I'll wait for two. Wow, this is pretty full on stuff. I should should fix that. Should probably fix that. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know why I have ink sacks over here. Or redstone. Let me throw the wood pulp back. I don't know why I have ink sacks over here. Why is there a sack in my machine? Interesting. I'm not sure why you're here. And I'm okay that you are. Welcome. But... Why? What is the why to this? I need to know. Okie dokie. Iron and gate will now respond to things properly. Bring it down here. Bring it over here. It's an and gate, so both of the conditions have to be met for something to happen. Right? I hope so. Iron transport pipe. Uh, same thing over here. Oh wait, no, no, no. I wanted that to be... Uh, I want that one to be replaced, right? That's the one I want replaced. Please right click. Yep, that's the one I want replaced. Not this one. You're fine. You're fine. Um, if inventory full, go east. East. Yeast. Yeast. This one's weast, right? Weast. Yeast. What's east? That that one and this one. Put that there. Put this here. Now, in order for things to go down, we need two conditions. We need space in the inventory. 
And we need that signal to be off. It currently is not, so it's going in the other direction, really. Hmm. It's still not working. So I need it the other way around. S right? Let me consider for a moment. I think about this for a moment. Down. Only go down if this signal is off and that thing's not. Otherwise, otherwise go west. So, ooh. Hmm. I gotta think about this a little bit more. Big brain. Big brain. Gotta think with that big brain of ours. Items and in inventory. If there is space, you wanna go down. Go down. If it's not on, you want that too. I want the not condition on the other side. This is the override. This red thing is the override. So. My brain's going in loops. My brain's is going in the loops here. I gotta think about this. It's tough when I gotta use my big brain like this. I'm pretty good with like mental math and stuff like this, but when it comes to like logic like this, I sometimes get a little tongue tied and twisted. I do like this though. If there is space and the signal is off, put it downwards. If. Uh, so you know what? I want an OR gate too. Then I want, if there is no space or the red thing is on, I want it to go the other way. So I need another AND gate too, but I need an OR gate this time. Might as well have a few of them. Or gate, or 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 gate, ion or gate. How do we make you? Uh, do you have to be turned into it? No. What is? How do? How do or gate? Oh, oh. Configuration two. Okay, actually, I might have enough time to go back and stop the processing to make a couple of or gates too. Run, run, Steve, run. This is a matter of life or death. We're not life or death. Ah, uh, it seems that I did them all already. They're all done. Okay, well, now I know that. And now I have a few ands. So now let's make a few ors. Yeah, it's fine. That's 24. That's 6. Uh, where's my squid wibble? 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 Let's turn this into a... Turn it into a... Two. Two for circuit. There we go. It's a two for now. But I need more redstone chips. Uh, I don't need as many this time. I'm not gonna wait on 16 of them. Let's just let's just do eight. So I need iron. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I also need. Let's just send those plating while I search for the other things. Oh, I need. I need screwdriver for number one, one for working. Jeez. I need this to be circuit one in order to bend things. So. <laughs> it's okay to switch things back and forth every once in a while. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I need the chipsets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I also need the red alloy, so red stone. Uh, I don't need 16 of it this time. So let's take half a stack of redstone and uh, copper. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not nine. That's wrong, stupid right click. You've got that. You're probably all good now. I've got my eight plates. I will take this out. I will program it to number two. Number two, number two. Number two, not number one, number two. We'll bring that back over here. I need the foaming press to combine the iron plates together with the chipsets. And then I've got some iron chipsets and that is really good. And then I mix them together. Perhaps right over here. I need my vanilla alloy. La 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 la. Put it in the furnace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cameron mumbles to himself and sings random tunes because I don't know what's going on. But that's okay. There we go. Red alloy. Have I scanned this before? <gasps> I have not scanned it before. Let's scan it and find out. Mechanism. Cool. Zerp. Zerp, 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 zerp. Do we have eight of them yet? We've got five. Patience. 
Patience for a moment. Oh. Oh, no, 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 We have eight now? We have eight. Wonderful. Let's grab it. Perfect. And now I should have war gates. Yeah. And I just need two. Logic, logic, logic. This is what I went to school for. One of my classes was digital logic design. And essentially, like, I mean, I'm not sure if anybody else has seen, like, the redstone reddit where like you make these incredible redstone contraptions because essentially redstone can give you ones and zeros and that's really all computers are so you can make like entire computers in minecraft and i think that is totally incredible especially for the people who take the time to build those like the the time it took for sony to design that design that chip in like in real life astounding also astounding that you did it in minecraft you spent the time and effort to do that that is awesome it's so cool I've seen like machine learning done in Minecraft because if you can have machine, if you can build a computer in Minecraft, you have a Turing complete system. That's awesome. Uh, it's, it's, it's like astounding to me. And uh, I mean, I wish I could do something like that, but like, honestly, I don't think I'd want to spend the time going through that. So like, if if anyone out there is like into that redstone stuff, I, I, I kind of want to know about it. it Cause that's like super, it's cool. It's awesome. <laughs> That, like, you can spend the time and effort on that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I spend the time and effort on certain other things. It just doesn't happen to be that. And I love to know, like, what it's, what it's kind of like. I'm sure it's a lot of just, you know, sitting there trying to get things worked out. Probably finding the circuit online and seeing how you could do it in Minecraft. And see what other people's implementations are. And, you know, circuit design in general, especially on that level, is always being improved upon every single day anyway in the real life. And you can simulate those systems in a game like Minecraft with all your redstone uh, lines and stuff like that. And then you've got control systems like this to make things a little easier. You can make logic gates like this with uh, vanilla Minecraft, but I mean, it'll take a lot more space and probably be a little more involved and require more skill than I actually have. So I like to take the pieces that somebody else put together and put them together. That's my kind of circuit design. I don't like to put all the wires together but I like to take the piece, like the little the integrated circuit, and combine that with something else. Like, I'll take your microcontroller and add some stuff to it. Like an amplifier or something like that. I'm cool with that. But I don't like making the amplifier itself. Or making the microchip itself. That's a little much. Like the actual integrated circuit. So now with this one, uh, this is, this is at west? That is east. 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 If the signal is on... Red pipe signal is on, or it is full. Full? Full? Full. Full. Full? Full is full. Inventory. Empty. Full. Then you go in that direction. Currently, it is going east because the signal is on. Perfect. Uh, same thing for you. You go east. East. If that red signal is on, or we are full. There we go. And it is going in that direction and things will be passed as normal. If I turn this off, everything's going down because this is not full yet. It's got dirt in it. We don't need dirt. Dirt, dirt, not necessary. Dirt, not so good. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. That totally works now. And now, to summarize, we now have a system where charcoal is being made over here. A world anchor or something that keeps the chunks loaded can be fueled by charcoal. So whenever charcoal is made, it is sent over there and placed into one of these two, or one of these two, if not both of these uh, transceivers here, or this, the, uh, these anchors here. Uh, if they do, it'll keep the chunk loaded, which is exactly what we want. Uh, if not, then you know. You know what else I should do here as well? I, I think of it this way, actually. If... Hmm. I actually changed my mind a little bit. If this thing is on, if this, this red signal is on, instead of telling this not to send anything into the hopper, instead, there should be a red zone signal cutting the hopper. Therefore... When I turn it back on, it'll pop the stack down, and there's only one stack remaining to be filled so that the whole thing isn't just empty. Instead of having 10 stacks to refill, there will only be two stacks to refill. So I'm going to make that adjustment real quick. So... I need my structural pipes. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to take this off, right? This ore pipe doesn't really need to be here anymore. Um, so we'll do that. That doesn't really need to be there anymore. Uh, so I kind of did that 
for nothing here, but I can reuse it elsewhere. I can reuse it elsewhere. If this is in fact full, like if I if I fill this up, does it start sending things the other direction? Yes, it does. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. Perfect, 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 perfect. And that says, actually... Hmm. Yeah. Alrighty then. I like that. Cool. Uh, now I will get some structural pipes and a little gate where if this redstone signal is on, instead of telling us not to put things in a hopper, just turn off the hoppers. So I'll get some... I just need two structural pipes for that. Which should not be too difficult to go grab. Let's go grab some structure world pipe and sub red wire. I need red wire. There we go. Boop. Oh, goodness. Boop. Come on. Thank you. And I need structural pipe. Structural. And I got these gates to do the rest of the work for me. Let's pop it on in. Pop it on in. Pop it on in. Oh, by the way, I'm finally getting a look at the time now. It is about 1 o'clock where I am right now. I have a meeting that I need to go to for my uh, some final projects at 2 o'clock. So I'll be wrapping this up in about an hour for those who are sticking around now if you're mentioning it. Just to let y'all know, in case you're curious, wouldn't want to end things abruptly. I don't like doing that. I don't like ending things abruptly if I don't have to. And really, like, I never have to. So let's put this wire here, wire there. Come on down, come on down. There we go. There and here. If that redstone signal is on. If that's all. If that red signal is on, we are going to apply a redstone signal to the hopper. If the redstone signal is on, bring a redstone signal over here. Same thing right here. If that red pipe signal is on, turn a redstone signal on over here. That way, uh, currently if I take these out, it'll start... Well, actually, that's that's not a very good example. But if I take this out, it'll start coming back in. If I turn this off, uh, it will not be going in. It will not be refilling anymore. So, perfect. Exactly what I wanted it to do. It'll still keep filling this up, but it won't pass any more of it downward. Now, does this work with like this? Yeah. So that's a little unfortunate that it doesn't, it kind of fills up from the back, but this is a pretty self-sustaining system here. It should work just fine. Uh, I believe it, if it fills up linearly like that. Yeah, it should, it should. So the last thing that I want to do over here is I, I want to fill it up with charcoal. I, I'm happy to have uh, these things on right now. That's fine. You can, you can go and do your dimensional thing right now. Let me just fill you up so you got everything. And hopefully what I can do is I can leave that for another couple of hours as another test to see whether or not uh, it is sustainable. If I leave it for like 19 hours and I'm totally, I'm not gaining any charcoal, then it is not a self-sustainable system. I need more charcoal. Um, if I do actually have charcoal that's increasing, then the system works just fine. I just need something to uh, make sure that I have a sustainable fertilizer uh, thing. Because uh, I need a constant source of fertilizer. And I currently do not have that. Let's fill you up. And we'll fill you up too. Just just to make sure that everybody's happy and everyone's got their stomach all filled. Nobody's hungry or anything like that. We're not hungry for more charcoal or anything of the sorts. We don't. We're not hungry. Not like that. Okay, you are all filled up. Everybody's been filled to the brim. Meaning everything gets passed on the other way. So as long as I'm making at least, on average, not four charcoal a minute. Yes, two, two charcoal every five minutes or whatever. How much is the charcoal worth? I don't really remember, remember anymore. Anyway, so long as that's the case, then we'll be okay. I'll put my player sensors back because I don't need them anymore. Same thing over here so I can close the doors automatically when I run through. I like that little mechanism. It's a beautiful little mechanism. I love it. Make my way back up. Grab some nether brick. Make things look pretty. Because I want things to look very, very pretty. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Put them in the storage. Dirt. Dirt. Uh, I don't need amber dust. Amber dust. I need nether. Nether brick. Where's on my nether brick? See, I knew I didn't have it on nether brick. I apparently don't have a lot of nether rack either, because uh, it gets all chewed up. I thought I had... Did I have nether rack over here? I thought I did. No, it's been replaced with something else. 
Okie dokie then. I don't have nether rack. Interesting. But I like at least a little bit of this cobblestone. Little, little, little bit. Little, little bit of this cobblestone. Doop. Oh, chucks. There we go. And give me this cobblestone. I got the nether brick and I got some cobble. That's good. Gucci, Gucci gumdrops. I need more nether rack. I could probably go and grab some of that at some point. But not right now. I don't need to right now. Oh, I have more nether brick in my inventory. Oh, duh. That was the nether brick that was already there. How you doing on Steam? Probably not. Not super duper good. Let's make it look nice. It'll make it look nice and pretty. I don't like leaving stuff like that. It's not very pretty at all. I gave cobblestone. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't realize holding the control button will actually give me items. So, uh, whoops, didn't mean to push that in there. Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, this is stone. This is stone bricks on the ground. Stone bricks. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, I need to... I don't need cobblestone. I need stone. That's what I need to make things look better. Back up to the storage system. Back up to the storage system. Gonna get some stone. 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 Will the stone work for me now? Uh, no. Stone. Yes. Yes. Modern mixed masonry. Hello, Zoatar. Glitching through the wall. How are you? How are you? Lovely. Very good. Don't come inside. Are you coming inside? You're about to come inside. Are you coming inside? What are you... Oh, what are you doing? I can't... Whoa! Oh, I broke the glass. I don't want to break the glass. Oh, no, I broke the glass. I don't want to break the glass. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! I'll put the glass back. There we go. I'm gonna fix that glass. Fix it. Fix that glass. My right mouse button would work. I'm gonna put that mouse back. Uh, decent. Then put that glass. Put the glass back. There we go. Mwah! Beautiful. Beautiful glass. Unlike any glass I've ever seen before. So beautiful. Cause it's thick. It's thick glass. The thickness is real. Get down with the thickness. Oi. Oh, hello. Uh, there's my big eggs. There's my big eggs. Re put these walls back to the way they need to be. I now put you back to your original beauty. It's probably going to be visible over there, so let's... I'm going to need more nether brick, but this will be good for now. There we go. That's okay for now. That's better than it was before. It's, it's, it's not super pretty at that angle, but it's very pretty at this angle. Cool. That's lovely. And so now I think I will go back to mine more phosphorus. Phosphorus and appetite. Phosphorus and more appetite. Appa, appa, appetite. Stone, get in there. Cobblestone, get in there. Ink sack, forgot where you came from. Might as well grab those other ore gates from over here that we're cooking up. We're nice all cooked now. And uh, I'll take this configuration two, turn it back to configuration one, and put it back in the metal bender, leaving things as they were before. And leaving Cameron a very happy camper. Because eventually I'll go later and try to bend something up. And I'll be like, where the hell is my... Where the hell is my... Where's my chip? Where my chippies at? My chippy no here. Make me sad. Hunter's backpack. Hunter, hunter backpack. There we go. Boop. There we go. And yes, let's continue making more mining stuff. Hopefully the system works well but i will only be able to share next time on minecraft not not right now la 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 these things aren't going crazy are they now just making sure this still isn't chucking up all my energy are you chucking up all my energy no you're not perfect there's nothing less than you thank goodness and you y'all aren't doing anything there's no more ammonia in here there's no more um nitric acid lovely I mean, the goal is to be able to use as much of the sulfuric acid to, to fill this all the way up. And then when that fills all the way up, it'll fill this all the way up. And then this fills all the way up. And this fills up with nitric acid. And this fills up with ammonia. And at that point in time, if I ever needed ammonia, if I ever needed nitric acid, if I ever needed sulfuric acid, all I need to do is take a little bit from there. And then it's just a self-sustaining system. Or if I ever come across uh, sphalerite, and Galena, and it comes back into here and starts making like, um, starts making Indium, then it'll just go off of that. 
because everything's all filled up. Because I'll admit, this... That is so satisfying. The f almost full tank of like the pulsating like orange liquid that looks so cool. But this is like, it's so empty. That's so empty. This is so empty. This would be like a nice purple color. And this thing over here would be like, an, like a yellowish, like a, like, a, like a light yellow, almost hay colored. It's, it'd be beautiful. It'd be beautiful, but the Indium Suite is not painted right now, so to speak. It is not full of the, the beautiful colors that it should be filled with. Anyway, time to go grab more Phosphorus and Appetite. Specifically, more on the Phosphorus side. Appetite is pretty intense. It's kind of like Redstone in the sense that it drops more than just two. So when you when you pulverize this, it becomes 16. That is a lot of Appetite. I do not need, I will never need that much Appetite. But alas, I have plenty of Appetite. Actually, come to think of it, I was, I was searching for Appetite before in the storage system where I think it actually, yeah, it's supposed to be over here. Because of how much appetite I find, and how much appetite gets sent into the system, it should be over there. Appetite. Like, this shouldn't be here. This should be over here. Um, unfortunately, it requires a little more resources for me to set things like that up. These barrels over here are all connected to the system. They're all connected. These ones over here are not. Yet, they will be connected at some point. That way, you know, sodium will have a place to stay, so will the sand, all that stuff and whatnot. Um... Redwood saplings, whatever it may be, will have their proper place inside the system. Oh, just like the netherrack. Netherrack wasn't showing up in the system because it's not connected to the system right now. So, and honestly, I forget about these. Like, I get rotten flesh all the time. So, it should be over here. But the problem with this, in applied energistics, these wires here can only hold eight channels. Every single one of these interfaces here are one channel. One cable can only hold eight channels. If I tried to add one onto here, it just wouldn't work. That last one maybe sometimes would work, maybe sometimes not, but it depends on how the network is when it first boots up, when you actually turn on the storage system. Um, but so I can get bigger, denser cables, and if I get bigger, denser cables, they can hold up to 32 channels at a time, and then I would be able to connect all the rest of these to it, but it's a little resource intense right now, and it's not really my goal right now. I'm trying to figure out the power issue more so than anything else. That's the current roadmap, but it's great. The, these barrel system works super, super duper well, uh, since you would not be able to have 240 stacks of stone dust in these little memory cells over here. It just wouldn't work they can only hold a thousand and twenty four which is oh where's the math where's the math of the math one thousand and twenty four one oh two four divided by sixty four is that's not right one oh two four divided by sixty four is eight sixteen sixteen so you'd only be able to have sixteen stacks of something max over here well sky's the limit if you got barrels sky's the limit if you've got all these barrels i love java barrels love me my java my java barrels Hubba bubba jubba bubba barrels. And so now we'll go find some more phosphorus. And uh, that's, uh, depending on how long that takes me, that might be the end of it for today. We'll see, we'll see. I gotta finish up my senior projects. That's actually been going incredibly well. So the whole premise of this project <clears throat> is that, uh, so mach machine learning is basically just you it's a bunch of glorified statistics They look at a bunch of data. They learn on that data that you try to predict that data The idea is to use machine learning to be able to take a, an amino acid sequence or a genome sequence like something that you got from like a bacteria and Then give that to the machine and then we ask the machine. Hey machine based off of the sequence of letters that I just gave you what antibiotic do you think would work best about this particular bacteria. Like when you get sick, you want to get all that bacteria out of you, and oftentimes what you use for that are antibiotics. Um, things like amoxicillin, penicillin, um, insert literally any other, I don't know, acicillin here, uh, will kill that bacteria in your body, or at least try to. It'll, it'll give you a bit of a boost. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go this way. But so we ask the machine, like, of these options that I'm giving you, and we we kind of, we give it the sequence, and they say, this is the correct answer. Here's a big sequence of letters. This is the correct answer. Learn from that, and then I'm going to give you new sequences, which you haven't seen before, and you have to try to guess correctly based off of what I've showed you already. And that's essentially machine learning in a nutshell. That's specifically called classification. Classification is, I give you something, and you are going to tell me which class it falls under. There are only a certain number of classes. 
a regression type of machine learning problem would be I give you something and you're trying to give me a number that corresponds to that. Like if I gave you a bunch of stock things and I tell you what price do you think it'll be based off of what you'd seen in the past that's probably a regression problem because it could be it could be 1.2 it could be 1.3 it could be 1.23 it could be 1.23333331 or it could be anything like that and that would be something that we call a regression problem because there is not one class that it would fall under or not multiple classes it could fall under uh, it would just be more like a you have this line and you want to predict where it is on the line based off of what came in with all these variables and whatnot. And anyways, in any case, this is a based off of that, this is a classification problem. And it's you give the sequence and you ask it out of these antibiotics, which one do you think works the best against it? Previously, I actually did another project where it was a similar, it was the kind of the same thing, except you weren't giving a sequence, you were giving an encoding of that sequence. Like if I told you... Oh, what's up there, pal? Oh, bye-bye. Okay. Well, no antibiotic is going to be able to fix those broken bones. But the previous project I did was, instead of using genome sequences or amino acid sequences, it took something called KMERS, and K is just replaced with any number. K is replaced with any number. If I gave you... If I said two MERS... There's all my phosphorus. Yeah, I want phosphorus. If I gave you two MERS... Then you would spell out my name, for instance, C-A-M-E-R-O-X-N, because that's what we go with on the show. And you would try to determine all the tumors that, two MERS that appear in my name. And there is C-A-A-M-M-E-E-R-R-O-O-X-X-N. Those are all the tumors. None of them repeat each other. If you were to do something like a three MER, you would do C-A-M-A-M-E-M-E-R. E R O R O X O X N. Those are the three MERS in my name. And you can take any sequence and represent them by those K or N MERS. And uh, that particular assignment, that I, that particular project that I worked on, um, was actually one of these regression type problems that I was describing earlier. It wasn't, hey, which antibiotic do you think would work? It's, hey, we have this antibiotic. We just want to know how much of it to give to our patient to effectively kill off the bacterial colonies. And that was called the minimum inhibitory concentration, aka called the MIC of a particular antibiotic. Like if you were suffering from bacteria X, I want to know how much of antibiotic Y to give to you in like milligrams or something like that. Like the minimum amount to give you to kill off that bacterium. And that depends upon the, the bacteria that depends upon the genome because different bacterium have different characteristics depending upon what type of bacteria it has. You may have like your gene you would be genetically different from your neighbor. I'm genetically different from my brothers. And if you were to take my entire genome, you might be able to tell how many hot dogs that I can eat in a sitting. We can we can genetically determine how many hot dogs that I would be able to eat in one sitting by my genome secrets alone. At least that's the idea. And I may not be able to eat two hot dogs. I could definitely eat two hot dogs. I might not be able to, to eat five hot dogs, let alone four, but I may be able to eat on average three and a half. And you could ask the machine based off of my input sequence represented as these K-MERS, how many hot dogs on average I would be able to eat based off of my genome. And that could be fun. That could be a really fun prog prog uh, project. But, uh, yes, so what we were working on is this genome sequence or amino acid sequence to try to determine which antibiotic would work. Classification versus regression. And that's the idea. But specifically, we're not just using any particular type of machine learning. There are a lot of places out there who have developed machine learning models that work really, really well on this. So the idea is not to reinvent the wheel. The idea is to take pieces of those models that are already pretty pretty good and tune them specifically to our use case there are a lot of models out there for example i think one is called it's gpt something or other which is really really good at something called n n as in nancy l as in larry p as in pencil nlp natural language processing and that's essentially taking the words that i'm saying right now putting them down into a transcript and determining hey is is this guy having a good time sentiment analysis is Take the statements that I say and determine, was this positive or was this negative? 
oftentimes uh, the classic example is taking like reviews like movie reviews putting them into this model and being like hey um is this a re good review or is this a bad review and uh if i say yo this movie was great sounds pretty positive um if i said yo this movie was effing awesome or effing terrible effing terrible probably pretty bad effing awesome probably pretty good yo this movie was effing the machine might be able to determine whether whether or not that was good or not if you were to use a word that isn't used very often for example yo that movie was bussin like the model might not know exactly what that is bussin to the machine sounds like bus like like a bus but to us we're just like no 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 no. it's it's positive the connotation is positive and the machine not, might not be able to figure that out but if you were to say bussin awesome probably more towards the positive side bussin terrible probably more towards the negative side i don't know exactly how they do it another thing that these particular language models can do is you can give them a sequence of letters and try to copy it for example i can give the machine a bunch of shakespeare work and i say all right here's the word that you're going to start with you're going to start with the fairy and then you're going to complete it in the way that shakespeare would do and there are models that do that it's very entertaining or I can give you a single letter, and I'll try to guess what the next letter in that statement based off of a bunch of text messages and stuff that it might have been trained upon. That stuff is really, really cool. But so, as it turns out, if you think about it, a string of words, a st basically a sequence of letters in an alphabet of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, U, plus all of, the con all of the bits of grammar, all the punctuation marks and whatnot, is essentially what you're doing with this sequence of geno of um amino acids or base pairs so the idea is you might be able to take these really really big models that have been trained by somebody else not me i don't have the resources for that and fine tune it to be able to predict the antibiotic resistance instead instead of hey here's a sequence of words that are separated by spaces tell me how good the review was tell me whether it was positive or negative instead it's hey Here's an alphabet of four letters, genome sequence. Or here's an alphabet of like 12 to 13 letters, amino acids. And tell me whether it's class A, class B, class C, class D, all those. We think, the, the, the hypothesis is, we can take those models that have been trained for natural language processing, NLP, on genome sequences as well. To be able to use this as a way to, for example, if you've got a back, if something's going wrong with you, and we take... A little swab of the bacteria and culture that we can probably rapidly sequence that genome and determine what amino acids are inside of that bacteria and we can send that into the machine to say hey i've got an idea that this this patient would do really really well if you gave them penicillin as opposed to another um another type of antibiotic like amoxicillin or something like that and those are just the two that come up in my head the most not that it's most common or anything i just those are the most familiar drugs that i can think of my brother is allergic to penicillin and amoxicillin just sounds very similar um but so that is the idea so we're taking these models that are already trained on something like sentiment analysis or something like that has to do with natural language predicting the language predicting what type of language we're using and use that on genome sequences as well and the idea of taking a piece of this model siphoning it off and putting it somewhere else for a different use is called transfer learning. Transfer because you're taking something, you're taking something from over here, maybe taking a piece of it and put it over there, maybe mix it with something else over here, and you transfer it and you make your own little model on it. Or you take the model over here, you put it over here, but you tweak it a little bit. Like you kind of turn the knobs a little bit so that it's focused on maybe not out the alphabet of, let's say the language of in English, perhaps another language or the language of life the alphabet of life like genome sequences that's the idea at least and so what we've been doing pretty much all term has been have been taking these uh there are these research papers that we were given in the very beginning there's about seven of them and we were tasked with hey you're gonna take these models predict what we told you to predict the uh, antibiotic resistance and compare them to this other baseline over here which does the whole damn thing excuse me and so that's been the goal and we have about we did we were able to evaluate the baseline model we were able to evaluate at least i think four to the other four of the other ones too let's see there was the 
Uh, I'd say that I'd say the names, but I'm not exactly sure whether or not. Actually, no, I, I think I can. Let's see. There was a paper by uh, an individual named Revis that we were able to do. El Nagar, um, Hamid. Um, there was another one whose name escapes me, and I think the other one. So I think we have five plus the baseline, so six evaluation metrics right now. And as it turns out, some of these methods totally work. It's it's not really very. Uh, it's not as good as it could be because we you know we're we're just kind of doing a we're trying to test a lot of things so it's not like we can take the time to really put in all of the effort of fine-tuning everything as best as we possibly can besides that's not the point of this particular study this but the point of this particular study is hey is this whole idea of transferring pieces of some models into other is this even a good idea and uh yeah looks like it is uh the way that we evaluate these is we kind of ask the machine many many times and we're like hey take all these sequences i want you to tell me which one which antibiotic you think is best for it and then we tell you how wrong you are how many things you got wrong and if you got 10 wrong out of 100 then you are 10 percent accurate and there's a bunch of other metrics as well that are really really useful in statistics such as precision or recall or the false positive rate or the false negative rate or you know all things like that which i i love going into details like this so but i i, I don't want to i don't want to bore of course but the basics of it all is we evaluate them and see like how do they compare to the other ones and as it turns out compared to this baseline model that we have most of the models that we've tested so far actually have uh like a little bit of increase as opposed to let's say the baseline was like 50 percent accurate these ones are like 53 or uh 55 or uh maybe a little bit less like maybe 51 but there's even still they're a little bit better and especially when you're doing stuff like this you kind of have to ask yourself well is a two percent increase of accuracy really that significant and that's what you use the other uh the various other metrics to kind of kind of ask yourself like what you say wow this looks really good but if i look at it from a different perspective is it really that good and oftentimes that can fall a little bit short because just because for example uh, let me um give a quick example if i had 100 green balls and 100 red balls and i asked you blindfolded to determine what by picking up the ball and feeling it that they're all the same texture you just have to you have to know what color it is to tell me once you pick up all 200 of those balls which ones are red and which ones are green and depending on how you answer you may be more or less accurate for example if you answered randomly red and green you'd probably be somewhere in the maybe on average like 60 percent accurate maybe 40 percent accurate because randomness is a thing there's ways to model that but if you were to guess red every single time you're gonna be 50 percent accurate what if i had 150 red balls in there and only 50 green balls and you guess red every single time you're gonna be 75 percent accurate now that sounds pretty damn good now what if i gave you there's only one green ball and 199 let's let's make it a little simpler for the math there's one green ball and there's 99 red balls and you guess red every single time then you can be 99 percent accurate that sounds pretty damn good but what if i then ask you to predict which ones are green and you do the same exact thing you'll only be one percent accurate so something like that is you can determine from various other metrics if you wanted to find things like that. Just because you were accurate doesn't mean that you're very precise. Just because you're accurate doesn't mean that you are very specific with your observations. I mean, I mean you in this case as if you were the machine. Maybe if you know, don't don't take don't take this too far out of context. I certainly wouldn't be testing anybody about how many red balls there are. But it's a really cool, it's a really cool thing. Stuff like this absolutely uh, kind of gets my gears a turning. Uh, otherwise i wouldn't be taking classes on it and it's actually kind of disappointing too because i have to think about what comes next after like graduation and stuff like that and there's no i have no guarantee that i will be able to kind of spread myself across many different um uh, la, 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 la. what's it called jurisdictions not jurisdictions many different fields kind of like what i've been doing and do projects from many different niches in the engineering world because I mean, if you if you find yourself a job, they're, you're going to be doing research for what they pay you to do. And on, I feel like oftentimes that's the niche area that you were hired for. And so, I mean, I, don't, I love being able to do different things. I like being able to be able to 
take the skills that I have. Sorry, I'm uh, doing my uh, doing my right click thing again because uh, things be a little weird. Anyway, but I like to be able to do all these various different projects and whatnot. You know, it's it's a hobby of mine. Just because uh, just because it's for school doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. And I do like it, and I like the challenge. Most of all, I love the challenge of it all. Because I'll be perfectly honest, this may uh, the this project that I've just been describing may have sound like, wow, this guy put in a lot of work. I really only put in that effort about a week ago. I have been focusing on other things in the meantime for the rest of my term. My terms are 10, uh, 10 weeks long. And so for the for the 90% of those 10 weeks, I was not focusing on this at all. So really only within the last week, that's called procrastination, by the way, and I suffer from it. Every, I mean, we all suffer from procrastination. That was something that affected me, but I, I'm able to kick my ass in gear. I, I, I think that I, as an individual, are really, really good with kicking my ass in gear at the last moment. When a pro professor or a teacher says, you can't get this done in an evening, I'm like, oh yeah, wanna bet? And I do it. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I go not so good on that. Don't get me wrong, this is a this is not a very positive aspect of my personality. I would consider it um, headstrong. I would consider it, like this is the way I would talk it up on a resume. But uh, really, I'm just, I like full. Oh, I don't need to do it right now. Unless there is an, unless there is a deadline that is currently being imposed upon me, I may not focus on that. I might focus on other things that have a higher priority for whatever my prioritizing thing is. If something is due tomorrow, it is definitely higher priority than if it's due in a week. If it's due at the end of the term, it is definitely more priority than something that I need to do to graduate. For example, my senior capstone project that I was working on. I needed that to graduate. If I didn't get that done, I would not graduate. It wouldn't matter whether I got this other thing done a day before it happened or not. I just would not graduate, and I wanted to graduate, and I want to graduate. And I am going to graduate, and I'm very happy about that now. Big thanks to my parents and everybody else who got me here, especially the boys and the gals who I knew as my friends in college to help me through. And uh, I'm hoping that I helped everybody out along the way as well. Otherwise, geez, what kind of a student would I be? Thanks for your help. I'm going to take all this and not use it to help you out and pay the favor forward. Like, t you dick? Nah. And it seems like I'm running out of space again. Gah! I didn't take that other digger's backpack with me. I should have, but I didn't. Whoops! But I need more... How much phosphorus do I have? Another two stacks of phosphorus. Not too bad. Not too bad. It seems like for this particular ore vein, there is phosphorus... And a little bit of appetite on these middle levels. Appetite more up on top. I see some yellow right up there, which I'll take with me. Yellow right is good for the reactors later on. Oh, jeez, hi there. I just noticed too. My sound wasn't on. I didn't notice that until now. Wow. I always forget. My sincerest apologies. It has been, what, four hours and I didn't notice that either. Just goes to show you how dense I am. I'm a little dense. I am a little dense. Hi there, pal. Bye there, pal. Bye-bye. <sniffs> ah, now I hear the- Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Nope, don't like you. Don't like you. Nope, don't like it at all. Don't like it at all. Nope, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm dark. I'm dark. I'm dark. I'm dark and I don't like it. I'm cornering myself. I am blind. That's not good. Where'd you go? Where'd you go, you asshole? Oh my god! The group came out of nowhere. I need to change this to long range mode and attack it. Die. Die, you asshole! It's pitch black. No, it's not. No, it is not pitch black. Stop that. The sounds really stopped for now. Okay, I need to I need to kill this thing from a distance. Those things are incredibly powerful. Yeah, get fired up. Get fired up and stay as far away from me as possible. I almost died there. That was a that was a close one. Honestly, you know what's better on this? Explosive mode. Oh, I need explosive. Die! Are you dead now? Die. Die, 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 die. Oh, why are you? Where are you going? Where are you going, pal? Where are you going, buddy? Ah, yes, I got him. Okay, that was freaking scary. I don't like that. I don't like when the grooves come out of the darkness. Freaking grooves from the darkness? They have some pretty impressive drops, though. Oh, hi, that creepy. Man, everybody's coming along for the party. Everybody's coming down. Everybody's coming down and having a good time. Where'd your drops go? Got some pretty good drops there. Otherwise, let's turn myself back onto low focus mode. I wasn't even using mining mode. I probably should have been doing that. Low focus, please. There we go. Perfect. Where'd your drops go? 
Where did drops at? Where are your drops at? Are they over here? Droppy droppy drops. Okay, there's something down here. What are you? Amber? Cool. What about the rest of them? I might not have dropped anything. Oh well. That was terrifying. That kind of stuff spooks me. Don't like it a gruise. We don't like it a gruise. I've got to be more careful. You see, what I should be doing is I should be looking at the journey map to see if there are any other enemies around me, and oftentimes I don't. Again, that goes back to my denseness. I'm a little dense in the head. But I use it. There are positive aspects to being this dense. Dense like in the mental way, not dense like I am denser than other human beings, like from a from a matter standpoint. More matter per volume. No, that's I don't think I'm that much denser. It's time to work that body with the shoulder squeezes. Oh yes. And what a lovely reminder. So let's let's do it up. Do it down. This is a nice comfortable exercise. One, two, three, down. Yeah. Makes my shoulders feel good. Put them up to my head and then down again. And then we put it up to my head. And then we go down again. I'm not in explosive mode, right? Nope. I'm in low focus mode. Yes. Much appreciated, dearest, for always reminding me to exercise my bestest. Much appreciated community members, the the, the party goers. Y'all party goers. Yeah. If this is the party, then we are all party goers. I like that. Yeah. It's all thanks to the party goers to make sure that we all stay active. And if you want to follow along with the shoulder squeezes at home, you're more than welcome to do so. That shoulder squeeze. And then we'll bring it back down. And then we'll bring it back up. And then wait three seconds. And then we'll bring it back down. And then bring it back up. Yeah, bring it back down. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's a... If I had a, a fitness show, that's what it would be called. What would it be called? It would be called exercise with an X. Except the X is always silent. So it would be called exercise. Yeah, that's funny. I like how funny that is. I am totally down with that. Let's put the stuff in the miner's backpack away. Put the miner's backpack just away. Yeah. More shoulder squeezers. I need to do at least 15, right? I think, did I do 15? I'll do a couple more just to be sure. Because you never know. And I'm usually not the one counting. See, it'd be convenient, right? What I should do is I should set up a little timer that goes onto the screen. And then when the exercise happens, depending on the exercise and depending upon the requirements, it should have a little timer and it should actually like count. It'll be like, yeah, at this amount of time, if you're holding for three seconds, you would have been on number two or number three. I can set that up. I just, I, I haven't been had the time to think about that. I'm trying to finish up my schoolwork and whatnot. But those are subtle improvements that I think would be very nice to have that I need to set up. It's great. The um the current system that I use for responding to channel points is uh something that was created called um cruise control, cruise with a K. And it works incredibly well. It can respond to chat messages and it can play sounds and stuff like that, depending on command sent or channel point redemption. However, one thing that it doesn't do right now, at least not easily, is it can't put like gifts or anything on the screen so if i wanted to put up a gif of a timer that repeats every three seconds i can't do that as of yet uh, i need to figure out something else for that but uh, i figure that'll make things a little more engaging a little more fun a little more easy for me and whoever else is on camera as well and the other co-hosts on camera as well to be able to figure out like oh where should i be at right now there's so much going on obviously like you never 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 know sell improvements like that we're always trying to perfect our craft, I think. And uh, I think it's the best way to go about doing it. I want to, you know, you want to perfect your craft as much as you can. Let's throw some charcoal in there. That'll get sent back to this over here. Let me see. While I was gone, have I collected more charcoal? Have we actually been getting a net positive of charcoal? Or has it been the same? 41 right now. So actually, I'm going to write that down to see if that number changes from later. Because currently... It doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's been going up. So let's see. We are currently at 41 stacks and 38 charcoal. Later on, when I come back a little bit later, I'm going to see if that number has changed. Now, for sure, for definite sure, 
I've been getting more saplings and I've been getting more birch wood because the birch wood and the saplings are not used to help out with these dimensional anchors over here. Actually, what I can check too is if these uh, hoppers are full. Are they full right now? They are. Uh, they're, they're full, at least right now. As full as they can be. And, uh, yeah. That's good, at least. It really hasn't been taking too much time, though. So I think what I should do, to really stress test this, I should take this charcoal out, and I should take this charcoal out as well. As if, if this wasn't fully, if this isn't fully up, will this work? So, uh, that'll be a little more of the stress test that I will experiment upon. Put all the rest of this charcoal back over here into the buffer because Buffy is good. So let's, uh, I gotta change that a bit. I gotta change the number now because I put the, the charcoal back. Yeah. Uh, 40 43. Um, 18. 33. And whatever. There we go. Boop. Wrote it on my note card. Put that back over here. And we still got, still got about 20-ish minutes left. I like that. Could be some more. Get some more phosphorus. Actually, let me check to see how much phosphorus I have. Like, uh, Also, too, if you may not have noticed, although that there is no steam being created from the charcoal buffer, I got a little thing up here. Little, little thing that takes energy from the sun and creates a little bit of steam. It's not a lot of steam, but if I leave that for a long period of time, it will recharge very, very, very slowly. But uh, that, that's the point. Let's see how much, how much phosphorus I got. Because the amount of phosphorus I have, I think phosphorus becomes... There's a shit ton of appetite here. There is no need for more appetite. But we do need more phosphorus. Phosphorus gets grinded into how many? Into six. So that's a lot of phosphorus, and it's a lot of appetite. And both those put together will mean a lot of fertilizer. That's that's the point. I need a lot, a lot of fertilizer. A lot, a lot of fertilizer. And I can get that with phosphorus and appetite. So that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That'll be wonderful. Let's see now. So, I'll go get more... Yeah, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to go get more of that stuff. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time over in the the whimsical... What did I call this thing again? The whimsical what? The whimsical warehouse. Jeez. I'm going to spend the rest of my time in the whimsical warehouse and do some more research. Uh, Yes, more research. No more deviating lilies over here. Everything's going fine. Making my way to warehouse across the field. Draconian is beautiful this time of day. Da, 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 da. Lovely, lovely day. You know what I should do later? After my meeting, I should totally go outside too. It's gonna be a gonna be lovely. It's gonna be a nice day to just go outside and just enjoy. Just enjoy what the world has given for us today. Morning times and good vibes. And although it's technically not morning anymore, like, I would say we're pretty much morning enough to still consider that morning this morning vibes, at least in my humble opinion. We got plenty of things down there. My whimsical spire. I need to find where my... Where is my... Oh, there you are. There are my tables. I got a world anchor over here, too. I could use a dimensional thing instead. Yeah, you know what? I don't need to knit this thing anymore. I should make one more dimensional anchor and replace this thing. Because I currently have what? Do I have some things in here that'll be in? Crystallized. Crystallized into essences. Very lovely essences. Wee woo wee woo wee woo. Wee wee woo wee woo wee woo wee. Okay. Where's my paper? Do I have paper over here? Do I not have a steady supply of paper and pens and. Well, there's two paper, but there's no ink sacks. Alrighty then. Pet. <laughs> Back to the laboratory to pick up some paper and pens. That's what we gotta do. Gosh, I am so... I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we finally found tungsten. That's perfect. That'll send us sky skyrocketing forward. That's amazing. So the next thing I want to work on... Ooh, let me like make a, make a note for this. I can make a note of what I want to work on next. Or I'll write it after the... I'll write it after the stream. I'll keep on moving with this. I've got a little bit left. I've got like 20 -ish minutes left. Got to pack in as much action as possible. Action, he says, on a Monday morning. But yes, we need that. And then I'll be able to, I can upgrade my... Oh, what's it called? I can update, upgrade my blast furnace to a higher temperature. By the way, the higher the temperature of 
yeah, the higher the temperature of this blast furnace, the quicker recipes can be executed, as well as the more efficient they can be executed at. As well as some some uh, recipes become um, accessible at higher levels. Let me let me check this actually. So if I get tungsten, right? Tung tungsten, tungsten, tungsten comes in over here. Uh, currently, let's see. Coil block, coil block, coil block. Currently, I have nichrome, which can go up to thirty six hundred kelvin. Tungsten steel can go up to forty five hundred kelvin. So if I need, wanted to wonder how to make tungsten steel, I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to go into tungsten steel and got and I'm going to get that down from here and then go over to the blast furnace. Let's see. Uh... So for blast furnaces, nichrome is 3600. So we can keep going and go. There's a lot of recipes here. So I'm just going to go towards the end because that's usually when the jumps start happening. Um, I can do everything up until osmiridium. If I want to go higher than that, I currently cannot make... Nakwada doped silicon bulls. I can't do that right now. Um, actually, this is only 4,500. So, um, so like the tungsten still doesn't really help too much. It doesn't get you to the next level. You would need this HSSG coil to get to that next level. Then you can start doing Nakwada doped monocrystal silicon bulls. Oh, these are apparently not sorted by their heat capacity. Oh, well, I don't really know what the highest one is. Okay, so I also can't make celestial crystal shards or uh naquata basically anything to do with naquata uh naquata is like a high-end level material uh, but there's some other stuff that goes in between like apparently i could do adamantium uh with nichrome which is pretty cool i don't even know where the hell i'm getting adamantium i get adamantium i think that's magical right yeah you need you need magic for adamantium but again like i don't know exactly what adamantium is good for it's probably good for armor if i had to guess adamantium ingot can i make it into armor C can i make it into armor is, is it good for tools uh, what kind of like, tool level is it what do we got tool level wise yes can i see the yes you is you are level five so it's incredibly good so that's cool that's pretty cool anyway i came in to grab more paper and to grab more ink I need more ink for my ink sacks. And let's grab some barrels, too. Let's grab a couple of barrels. La 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 la. Let's do that. And let's grab some paper. Paper, paper, paper. Let's go, like, yeah, a few stacks of paper. Let's go with that. Let's also go with a few stacks of uh, ink. Ink? How much ink do I have? That's plenty of ink. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's plenty of ink. I need sticks. I need sticks. Get sticks out of here. Get more ink. Out with the sticks. In with the inks. Hello, you. You're not my friend. You are most definitely not my friend. Hello, world. Goodbye, world. It is very dark now and it is raining. But that's okay. That won't stop us from making some magical, 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 magicals. Magical, magical, magicals. Oopsie. I fell off. Actually, you know what I should do? I should check one moment. Let me check my email real quick, because my uh, my partner, would, I'm, who I'm meeting with, I think, might have emailed me a little bit ago. Just to be sure I'm on top of things. And it's pitch black. You may be eaten. Oh, is that so? Would it really be all that bad if I've been consumed whole right now? Let me check this real quick-like. Let me see. Let me see. Do 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 do. Let me check. Oh, okay. There was a little bit of a confusion, I believe. Hold on. I just wanted to check real quick what my calendar says. Yeah. Meeting today since the graduating seniors seniors have to submit. Uh, submit by tonight. If that's all right, I'll see you at two. Or a little bit afterwards. That's fine. That's okay with me. Just have to double check on that. Usually we do meet on Tuesdays. However, class is not happening anymore. And, um, things of the sort. Come famous? I don't think I do. Nope, don't think I do. Bye bye. Don't want to become famous. Be gone, but. Be gone, butter. Butter, be gone. 
you know what? Actually, I changed my mind. I will put my barrels here, and I will place my paper and ink into here. What the? What are you? Yeah. Put the ink in there, my friend. Nope. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Put the paper in here. You need to put the paper in here. Actually, I think what I will do is there is a little. There's only a little time left. I feel not the need to move on to a different topic as of now. So instead, what I will do, and I will just kind of end it here. I think that's what I'll do. I'll run on back to the lab, and that's where I'll end it, just to give myself some buffer between the meeting and everything else. Uh, yeah, I like that. I really, I had a, I had a really good time. I had a really good time today. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming to the party. That's what we do. That's what we do. We do party around here. Yeah, party, party time. Party, party time. Just because we don't have party hats on physically doesn't mean we can't have party hats on mentally because there is always a reason to party. And that's what I love about this position. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for joining in and uh, coming along this beautiful adventure of ours called Life. I'm going to see if there's anybody else on for now. I don't think I see anybody. I don't see anybody. So... I think I will find perhaps uh, another. Let's see. Can I find another modded Minecraft? You know what? It, it's a little. It's a little involved for now. So I will save it for. Uh, I will save that for next time for probably a little better time in the day. Shame that I can't pay it forward as of right now. But I like to follow more people to make sure like I have people to raid. Like I love to raid the little. You know what? No, no, no. We are raiding the little guys. I changed my mind. I'm talking my way through it, and I'm cool with that. So let's Minecraft. Who's small on Minecraft? Minecraft people's is Minecraft people is Minecraft people is Minecraft people is Minecraft people is I'm gonna try to do this on my phone instead because it's a little easier to be searching around. But that's okay. I'll search for this in a moment, and uh, that's what I'll do in the meantime. As we continue on chatting away about this work that I gotta do, I'm actually excited to get this all over and done with. The context for today's meeting is the fact that I have the graduating seniors, which includes moi, um, have to ex have to submit their projects by 7 p.m. tonight. So I have to get my paper all up and running. Uh, I have to get my paper all up and running. Now I get my papers all up and ready so that I, I get it all done. It's kind of like the paper is kind of half done. So I am kind of doing that. It's It's happening at the very last minute type thing. It's kind of happening. Wow, I'm just scrolling down this Twitch page. This is crazy. There's so many people. Oh my god, there's so many people playing Minecraft. Let's do the filter. Let's. Who else is doing um? Let's 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 see who else is doing any modded stuff. Modded, 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 modded. Apply. Who else is modded Minecraft? Go to the bottom. Who's playing mods? Mod, 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 and mod, mod, and mod. Mod, 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 mod. I like that. Perfect. I think this will work just well. I'm seeing a wonderful victim who seems to be having a little bit of an intermission right now, which I think will be perfect. We'll catch them off guard. That's what we'll do. We'll catch them off guard. Alrighty. This is probably the longest I've ever taken to figure out where to go next. But you know what? I, I want to put more effort into it. So that's what we're going with. Perfect. That's what we're doing. Again, thank you everybody for coming along and enjoying this experience for me. Next time, if you'd like to, feel free to join the conversation with the rest of us. I'd be happy to hear it. If you're liking what you're seeing, this sounds so weird to say. I've never said this stuff before, but if you are liking what you're seeing, feel free to drop the follow if you want. Join the party. If not, you can subscribe on the YouTube. Honestly, you know what? Do whatever you want. It's just, it feels so pandering to me. It feels so pandering. Forget it. You do whatever you want. You have a wonderful rest of your day. To all the raiders, I will see you all later. Let's start this up. And to everybody else following along at home, I appreciate you all being here. I love you all very much. Have a wonderful rest of the day, evening, night, dawn, twilight, wherever you are right now. So long, everybody.